let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Anticipate each challenge, make a quick response, capitalize on every opportunity, and win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. We know there's only one team you want to watch. And Bally Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Thursday, March 21st. The date doesn't matter. It is the first day of March Madness, the men's NCAA tournament. Tipping off today, it is absolutely going to be a good day. And we have a special morning all morning long on Grind City Media, the GCM Mega Madness Show. I'm Jessica Benson. I'll be here to start this thing off. Bennett Doyle. Big Be Bennett is behind the glass. What's up, friends? How y'all doing? Where am I at? Oh, I'm right here. Where am hey, I at? Where hey, am I different at? camera angles today. I like it. We're figuring it out. We're figuring yeah. it out. Gary Parrish is going to join us. The big brain of it all uh, will join the show around 9 o'clock this morning. So around the one hour mark, Chris Vernon and John Roser are going to come through around 9.20. They will take the reins from there to get us all set up, leading up to the first game of the day, 11.15 a.m., is the first game, Mississippi State, Michigan State. It goes all the way until 9.05 tonight for the last game to tip off between Washington State and Drake. You may be asking, where's CJ Hurt? That's a great question. Oh, you don't That's know. a great question. He I'm was not here. sure where he is at the exact moment. Of course, it is a party of a day, so CJ figured out a way to get food involved because that is a very CJ thing to do. So Will Coleman, former Memphis Tiger, Will Coleman, who joins our show on Tuesdays, uh, he is cooking up a feast. I have been told there are things that have to do with cinnamon rolls and pizza rolls and all the rolls that we will be using to celebrate. Bennett, you know, it's so funny because when I was a kid and someone was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And my very far-fetched, fantastical answers were like, I want to be a hippopotamus or I want to be a Disney princess. Yeah. But then when it got to be Both cool. realistic, thank you, I was like, I want to be a professional hockey player for a period of time. Mm -hmm. If I knew I had to have a real job, I was like, all I care about is a job that believes in the sanctity of the NCAA tournament. Oh, a yeah. job okay. that proposes no work, straight hoops, on the Thursday and Friday. And look at us now. No, shout look out. Look at us now. I mean, obviously, we get to have fun for a living. So, But shout out to the offices, all the 
all the places that embrace these two days, because no one's getting any work done. No, no, no one's getting any work done. So when you get your no office one. pools going, get everybody involved, it's building camaraderie in the workplace. So shout out to all the offices out there embracing the NCAA tournament today. Offices who are doing it right. That's right. We focus on That's things right. like four-day work weeks and offices that let people watch basketball all day on the Thursday and Friday of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I, we do nothing. And luckily, we're going to be off the air by the time the game starts today. <laughs> so we set ourselves up right. CJ will be in here eventually with all of the food. We yeah, do what's have a Grizzlies going on game. Here? All I see are Hawaiian rolls. The only thing sitting on the table in front of me <laughs> is an apron and Hawaiian rolls. Th that's so good it, enough. We could just that's all you need, that. yeah. I love it. CJ was like, what should we put on the Hawaiian rolls? I said, I don't, I'm not the chef of this situation. I don't know what to put mm -hmm. on the Hawaiian rolls. What, Look at that. Just sitting there waiting to be consumed. Last night, Bennett, we have fully entered all basketball all the time realm already because we had the first four games and we had some NBA games last night, obviously the Grizzlies in action. And it was so funny because I suffered through the travesty that was the first half of Colorado Boise State. Oof, woof. Can I interest you in a combined two of 18 from three? 19 of 57 from the field? <sighs> That's bad. And the thing is, is we got a really good one before that. You know, the usually it's the seed flip, games have right? Been killer. Yeah, usually it's the flip, but these 16 seed games have been awesome. Shout out to Grambling, man. Shout out, Shout out to Mike Wallace. That's I, that's what I kept saying in yeah. my household all night. Shout out Mike Wallace. Yeah, man, that's cool. Montana State goes down to the mighty Grambling. And listen, for a school like Grambling that fights their way into their first NCAA tournament, like it's a big deal. They get a lot of money for getting a first four win and advancing into mm -hmm. the first round game. They get to play Purdue. I, I was watching the Grambling Montana State game and it was flying up and down the first half and I was like, Purdue. Oh. We know Purdue's history. What? What? We know how we feel about Purdue. But anyway, I was going to cleanse my eyes with Grizzlies Warriors and for a brief moment in time, I did. I was like, ah, oh, basketball. And as I watch college basketball with Chris, he's always like, this is why I can't watch college basketball. This isn't a professional product. And then we turned it to Grizzlies Warriors, which in our household is a very charged event always. Eesh. A late night Grizzlies Warriors opportunity. And then the Grizzlies stopped scoring and the Warriors went on a 22 to nothing run. And I was like, ah, we're back on these Virginia impersonators. Hey, Gigi had a career high 35 points. That's all I care How about. How about that? Did you see That's the Chris Paul thing? About. Yes. So let's go straight to that because I did think that was the best thing to come out of last night's game. We'll get into the Draymond Green of it all, the rivalry that continues to grow, which I will continue to call Grizzlies Warriors a rivalry as long as Draymond Green wears a Golden State jersey. We'll talk about that. But Chris Paul was doing his media availability after the game, coming off Gigi Jackson's tremendous night. And Gigi has played so well against the Warriors. You yeah. could consider his like, coming out party into the NBA. Like, who is this 19? year old kid who the Grizzlies may have gotten a steal with late in the draft he had that on a nationally televised game against Golden State this was his third time playing Golden State so they have all the opportunity in the world to game plan for Gigi Jackson to know what he's about and he goes out there and has a career high 35 points five rebounds three assists the kid is special like it, it's gonna become such a thing we say over and over and over again but he's special put him on the all rookies team Give him the opportunity to continue to grow as CJ walks in Look and is this. absolutely going to step Look in front of every this. single camera. What is going on? It's a spread. It's a spread. As they get set up, let's go to the Chris Paul quote. Because right. <laughs> Chris Paul came out after the game and had this to say when it comes to his favorite part of last night, even though the Warriors won. Honestly, tell you the most fulfilling thing about tonight was Gigi Jackson. Gigi Jackson was on my AAU team. Uh, I was his coach two years ago. Two years ago, Gigi was on my AAU team uh, with a John Adams coach, some great players, Rob Dillingham, uh, Aiden Holloway, a lot of great kids. And uh, Gigi is an unbelievable kid. We done played at Memphis twice this year, and I was hurt both of those games. So going into the game, um, it was crazy. It's crazy. Uh, sometimes he still called me coach. <laughs> and uh, he hit a three in my face early in the game. I was pissed because um, our AAU program is really like a family. And so to see um, him, to be out there on the court playing against him uh, is something I never get used to. It's kind of a surreal moment. So uh, I know I know I won't hear the end of that damn, what he have? 30 what, 35, career God. High, high. That was a career high? Don't make me like you, Chris Paul. 
Don't make me wake up this morning and think to myself, that was a lovely, wholesome moment from Chris Paul. What did you think when you saw it, Bennett? Yeah, I mean, I thought the exact same thing you did. Uh, it was just, it's just kind of surreal seeing, the, the, and obviously Chris Paul's a veteran and he's closer to the end of his career, but just to see him talk about coaching Gigi and, and how it pissed him off that Gigi hit the three in his face, like, it's kind of crazy how this stuff comes full circle and just him to have that moment is pretty cool. Uh, we There was the thing earlier this year about, uh, was it the Steph Curry camp? What was it yes. that, that Gigi got, yeah, he got cut from the Steph Curry camp or something like that. So it's kind of cool seeing these moments with these veteran, you know, Hall of Fame players uh, giving this young guy's flowers. And um, man, just, I don't know what else you can say about the potential future of Gigi because that was, uh, he looks awesome right now. Uh, yeah. Excellent marketing from yeah. Chris Paul because now I'm like, oh, Chris Paul's AAU team. It's got NBA talent. That's right. And you, you go to Chris That's Paul's right. AAU team, you might end up being the next Gigi Jackson. But I'm with you. Like, there's so many wonderful things to say about Gigi as he's played in the starting lineup, as he's come off the bench earlier in this season. Nothing feels fluky about him at this point. And right. that is so damn exciting when you think of what the Grizzlies and the ultimate silver lining of a season that has just been so marred by injuries and did not go as anyone anticipated. The Grizzlies used a 29th player last night with their most recent 10-day signee. And that gives them a franchise tying record of most players used in a season. The other time it was 29, it was Jaron Jackson Jr.'s rookie year, which was a transitional period for the franchise. We could very easily see 30 players, which would break the record because Brandon Clark, we hope we cross our fingers, yep. we knock on wood, that perhaps he could make a return as early as next week. But when you think about what you got to see from Gigi Jackson so early, and now you're having like tantalizing conversations about okay, would you rather have Gigi Jackson be your primary offense generator coming off the bench? Or is Gigi Jackson so good at the age of 19, he's going to be in the starting lineup? We've seen him at the three. We've seen him at the four. Yep. The Grizzlies now have so many options at the three, whether it be Gigi or Vince Williams Jr., Which someone is else crazy. who played their way off of a two-way contract this season. Marcus Smart is still sitting on that bench for the Memphis yep. Grizzlies. Like That position going into next season, you know, have a legitimate – Competition. Yeah, you got to think we're only a few months removed from us, everyone having the conversation of, well, how are the Grizzlies going to address the wing position yes. going into next season? And it's like, dude, that's the least of their worries right now at this point. You, you know, you, you go into the draft and draft season, you now can kind of center in on what exactly your main, which is rebounding, you know, you're centering in right. on what your main needs are going into the offseason, and it doesn't appear to be a bunch of different things, right? Yeah. No, it was it was a positive. I did feel like I put my, like, Twitter foot in my mouth last night because I tweeted, I can't believe 29 teams passed on Desmond Bain, because I tweeted it right after. He had two passes in a row. Mm -hmm. One, I forget who connected on the shot. The other, someone missed a shot. So only one of them was an assist. But some of those Desmond Bain passes, and sitting next to a Golden State Warriors fan while watching Desmond Bain play basketball, is such right. a fun experience because he's like, Desmond Bain's so damn good. Dude. Like, Desmond Bain is so damn good. But then he had a really off night overall with just six points. <laughs> two of 13 shooting, two of nine from three. He only played 24 minutes. Yeah. Like, and, the, and the game flow, obviously, like it got out of hand. But I did, I'm with you. I thought he was going to have a massive game. Me when too. he pulled up like right beyond half court, I was like, yes. okay, this dude's about to <laughs> I go think off that's tonight. That's right when I tweeted yeah. it. And yeah. then nothing happened the rest of the way. And someone quoted me and was like, mm, maybe not the game to have this. No, every game is the game to that's be right. reminded that 29 teams passed on Desmond Bain. But you see him with six, uh, Gigi with the career high 35, Jaron Jackson Jr., 28, and Santi Aldama with 27. Outside of those three guys, no one really did. Jack for no. the Grizzlies offensively last night. Jake LaRivia had 12 off the bench. Santi Aldama was involved in the spiciest <laughs> moment from the game last night. I was watching Sports Center this morning, and this was on every single hour oh, yeah. of Sports Center because, and that's where you cannot tell me that Grizzlies Warriors is not still a rivalry. And it was so strange. Bob Myers is doing. Yeah. Analyst work for yeah, ESPN right. now, and this is the second game I've had to listen to Bob Myers on. He's called two Warriors games mm -hmm. in the last like week and a half, and so he's on last night, and he talked about the rivalry of it all, and a piece of it is because Draymond Green can't let things go. Right. So as long as Draymond Green plays for the Warriors, in my opinion, this will be a rivalry because there is so much energy behind it, and the Memphis fan base and the Memphis team has so many feelings about Draymond Green. Yeah. I know a lot of... So are we calling every team a rivalry with Golden State? I, 
there are some because Draymond Green pisses some people off more than others. But last night was there he goes again. How's that therapy going? Look at this. Look at this. So this is the moment with Santi Aldama. They're pushing it. Nothing happens, which this is a reminder of if you let this go, sometimes it will come back around. And this is where it comes back around going into the timeout. Draymond and Dez start getting into it. You see the little, like, just love tap <laughs> Dez, between I the two. Dez. Dez, you know, he knows uh, what he's doing as well. And then Taylor Jenkins falls to the ground. And they go to commercial break yep. during the broadcast. And I'm like, no, stay there. Taylor Jenkins is in in need. Like, can someone please make sure? At some point, Taylor Jenkins is not an NBA player. Like, you fall down like that. Is he on he, the IR now? Joints. I don't think so. Are we sure? I hope not. The, the, way, right. this the way this season, season is has gone, gone, Taylor you know Jenkins me. is probably we on the IR. I'm sorry. Night, right? You know me. The second I'm like, is his Achilles okay? How is his Achilles doing? You saw him hit the ground and thought his Achilles? Yes, that's what I think about everyone. Immediately. This is my brain. Every time somebody hits the ground, it's not an Achilles. Anytime it was an awkward spill. you take spill. someone's arm and pull their arm away, I'm like, oh, they're Achilles. I'm like Jameis Winston. I just connect all the body parts together. <laughs> to, to the Achilles, okay. Did you see Jameis Winston take his, uh, he like showed up in business clothes yes, Tom. yesterday and was doing snaps with the center. I love him. I love the him. The most Jameis move of all. Um, the fact that that entire deal only resulted in a double technical yes. for Draymond and Desmond Bain is outrageous. It is absolutely outrageous. Like, first off, the official fell asleep during the Santi Draymond exchange. Like he's staring right at it. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you you have to blow your whistle there. I don't care who who the tech is on. If it's Someone. Santi or Draymond, you got to do something there because that's why it escalated because the official just let it go. Um but, yeah, back to your point about the rivalry. I heard them on the broadcast actually kind of say, um, on the ESPN broadcast, say, you know, it's not really a rivalry right now because the hinting because the Grizzlies are bad. I'm like, okay. Well, and well, hinting because Dylan's gone. And Dylan, But, dude, come on. You can't watch that. And, and when the Grizzlies are back at full strength next year, I guarantee you these games are going to get chippy again. They already – yeah. Or, like yeah. there is something there. Yeah. And I think it's Steph like, okay, too. Wait. I don't I don't think it's just Draymond. Like Steph's not gonna get Steph, into it with people. Even Clay still being there. St is Clay still being there? Last year he was counting rings. That's right, because there's still the whole legacy of um when the Warriors before they went on their championship runs were coached by Mark Jackson and the Grit and Grind Grizzlies just owned them for years and then they were able to overcome that hump and, and then obviously go on their championship runs. And so there's a ton of history there specifically with Steph Clay and Draymond, and I'm with you. Like, as long as those guys are there, it's going to always be like that. There's always going to be something. And even as, you know, we talked about, like, the future rivalry with the Thunder, which I'm super excited for. When the Grizzlies are at full strength and you play this Thunder team, that did you see that Chuck Holmgren dunk from last night? I did. We've had quite the week of dunks yep. in the NBA. Within that, um, I'm not my buying on name? that rivalry. You're not. Well, no, okay. it's it too nice. Feel the it's same. too nice. It does not yeah, feel. That's not the a same. rivalry. It feels a little. Uh, what's like? It, it's too buddy buddy. We're too sure. friendly. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I need some animosity. Falsified, forced. One would say, but that's how yeah. I feel about the Pelicans rivalry too. Because everything was supposed to be, oh, John Zion forever and right. always. And okay, it, it can't be. Waiting. Can't be a rivalry until people are fighting in the playoffs. Oh, CJ, that's right. Hey, that's that's we... that's the only reason Golden State is a rivalry yes. is because people got the fighting in the playoffs. Well. Can Cut we please show CJ's um well, you can see yeah, what apron. does that say? Can we see your apron? Yeah, it says bacon spirits bright. <laughs> this is my Christmas apron when I'm baking cookies. Okay. I like the frills, Bennett. I Forgive like me. the polka dots, Thank honestly. You. The polka Thank dots. He's got this little cool flappy thing right here. So when I get hot, I can just Oh, that's nice. Dad, in the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm working here. I'm working here. Very nice. Will, can you get on the mic real quick? Just real quick. We, this is we're, Will we're Coleman. Working. Will I know. Coleman. I haven't wanted to interrupt you guys. I see uh, cake. I see Will, rolls. can you tell the people about the cake real quick? All right, man. So we got a we got a spread over here. We just need the cake. We got so on the cake. Yeah. It's it's basically like yeah. a chocolate s'mores cake. Oh. Okay. Oh. We once once again we uh you know we all homemade baby. Oh my we don't gosh. we don't do store bought. Don't okay? do it. My shout out to my shoot my my uh my sous chef big time. They came <laughs> through big time. Big time sous chef energy. But uh right there that's that's homemade. Right man. Here, we don't homemade. We don't do that store bought stuff. Don't do the store bought dog. No. We don't do that. We don't do that. But we gonna I got some stuff to cut up and and but we gonna we gotta spread over here. We gonna get it popping okay. and get it rolling. Okay, I'm we're gonna reveal one thing at a time. Uh, Bennett. Yep. I think we're we're coming close to our first break. Okay. But before we do, I wanted to ask how many brackets have you made? Uh, I've made so I have I've made two. I've got one official one that I'll roll with today um, that I've entered okay. that I've entered in some contest. Uh, 
And Noah made a bracket as well, my son, his first ever NCAA tournament bracket, which surprisingly, because, I mean, what do you do? You, he's five, so yeah. you're going by the mascots, right? And we'll get to talk about this after the break. Surprisingly, it's not a bad bracket. Feels pretty good. There's some, there's some massive upsets in there that I'm not so sure about for Noah, but there's a couple picks in there that I'm like, I can see it, dude. I can see it. So... I'm excited about it. I'm excited to find out who Noah picked. We will be giving our picks throughout the day. Some of the games here on day one, round one that we are most excited to look at. If you are looking for a group to join, I know we have some new faces because it is a mega show. If you want to join our group brackets on the ESPN Tournament Central, our information, there is on the men's side, Mm -hmm. it is R and sign G because rise and grind forever, uh, chat bracket. And the password for that is capital B, the number one, capital O, capital C, capital K, capital P, lowercase A-N-T-H, the number three, R. Probably could have had an easier way of doing this, uh, like putting a graphic <laughs> up, but it's fine. I'm just going to give it to everybody. Jalen, can we write something up during the and break? And then the women's bracket <laughs> We'll, we'll is, get it up on the screen during the break. We'll get it up on yeah, the screen? Yeah, yeah, okay, great. Break, yeah. We'll get those up on the break. We'll go through all of today's matchups. Obviously, the games in Memphis don't start until tomorrow. That is a Friday-Sunday set in the first and second round here at FedEx Forum. But we'll talk about the players we're most excited to see, the games we're most excited to see. It is the GCM Mega Madness Show. We'll be back after a quick break. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com students. Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste to FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power On Board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Madness show. Jessica Benson with you here for the first like hour and a half. Ben and Doyle behind the glass. CJ Hurt and Will Coleman continue to cook up a storm. I see cinnamon rolls and I see fried chicken and I'm going to need taste it. Oh, I get a taste. Thank you. What's going on? I don't know. I'm getting a piece of chicken. It's starting to smell. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I want That's one. delectable. Something is beeping. 
Yeah, my, my Something's done. Time just, oh, okay. Time I was just set. making sure it wasn't like a fire alarm or something. Ooh, that's that's delicious. Is it? Yeah, you're off to a great start. Awesome. Oh, I got yours? There you go. Oh, oh my. There you go. Oh, right I'm sorry, go. Bennett. Can I interest you in a cinnamon roll with fried chicken in the middle of it? You absolutely can. We got a cinnamon roll basically with the chicken tendy in the middle. It's like a cinnamon roll chicken hey, tendy hey, sandwich. Real quick, real quick. What's going on? Was is is the is the cream cheese storm store brought? Is that is that sauce on top store brought? Man, come on, man. We we do this, man. That's homemade. That's homemade. That's homemade, homemade. That's homemade frosting, Everything baby. Homemade, Everything, homemade, Everything homemade, dog. Everything That's homemade. what we do. Everything homemade. Chicken homemade. Everything everything homemade. The, the cinnamon roll homemade. Cinnamon roll homemade. The frosting homemade. Homemade. All is homemade. All is homemade. That's what we do. This smells delectable. I really don't know where to attack it. Hey, Kyra, come over. Um, Get this, dog. Tell Kyra to come get hers. Kyra, come get yours. I was going to say, Bennett, during the break, the plight that I have to deal with uh, living with a Golden State Warriors fan before we wrap up the Warriors Grizzlies talk for the rest of the day. Mm. Uh, Chris sent me a video of Draymond Green in his press conference last night, and his kids came. They crashed his press conference, and Chris said, this is who y'all are hating on if you even care. If I even care, you want to use your children to try to add some PR points? Mm, meh, meh. They all That's do. That's lame. That's lame. Lame-o. Lame. Grizzlies will have their time, just not this time around. <laughs> did you watch the other first four games last night, Bennett? I did, yes. Did you, you enjoyed the 16-16 game between Grambling and Montana State because it was very fun. How is it? Apologies. Only, you, have, you have some frosting in your beard. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's amazing. It looks I know I should have shaved before I came in. Yeah, that, was, like that. that was kind of a mistake. I like mm, that. That's good. Uh, I CJ, I did want to ask you about last night's Colorado Boise State game. I know you have Sweat. gloves on. Sweat like a madman. CJ picked Colorado Sweat to like a Final man. Four. So you would have been able to change it had they no, won. No, I wouldn't have changed it because I'm a man of integrity. Okay. Wait, let me get well, in the camera shot. The there we go. I'm a man of integrity. To to. I just wanted an update on how confident you were feeling about your Colorado Not great. Buffaloes. <laughs> Not Was great. Was this you trying to make up for when you wouldn't get on the Deion Sanders train early last season? No, Colorado's, Colorado's, got two M- for you? Colorado's got two NBA players they on do. roster. They do. We heard they it a hundred times last night. I kept waiting what to see them. I got you. I was living on that Cody Williams block for a long time before he finally Those mine. I brought those from the house. Man, great minds. Probably both got them from lit uh, but no sweating it out but that's that's March Madness baby I, I, I have notes somewhere Jessica but you I have... think eight of eleven of the past final fours that have one double seed team yeah. there and when I looked at the the first four teams I was like oh Colorado's somebody of interest to me and then you think about it we get one of these oh good grief what a bite what a bite oh lord <laughs> Like get in there. Get in there. Get in there, Jay. Uh, but when we look at the, the first four teams, mm-hmm. right, They we've had first oh four God. teams win multiple oh games in the tournament. I was looking at it. I was like, oh, which of the first four teams do I think is most likely to do so? And it's Colorado. It's Colorado. Uh, didn't they get to the Pac-12 championship game as well? Sure I feel did. like they are playing at a again. high enough level. Yep. So, like, that's why I had Colorado. But, boy, your man was in there with the sweat towel dabbing the forehead because he was sweating, sweating. I was concerned for you. You should have been. I was concerned for me. What a dumbass pick. But that's the beauty what of a, March. What a you dumb can, game. You can make a bunch of dumbass picks. Who cares? Uh-huh. The, One number of, hit. Yep. the number of basket, both those teams, the number of at-the-rim shots they missed, yep. particularly Boise. Boise State went on like a six-minute scoring drought. Yep. Not the one at the end, which is also what ended up dooming them in that game, but in the first half where they had so many ins and outs. And that dude, uh, Tyson Dejenhart, who I feel like has been there forever, but I don't think he has. And the number of opportunities they missed, same thing went for Colorado. I do like that Lampkin guy, the big dude for Colorado, yeah. Eddie Lampkin. Did we ever, did they ever explain why he does the finger walking after he makes a bucket? What's he do? He goes like this. He's like, I never seen I don't that know either. what it means. Well, he yeah. did it multiple times last night. So I will be solving the mystery on Colorado Boise State and CJ will continue to have them in we, his final four. We also have your, um, your password and uh, yeah, there yes, we go. Okay. Yep. Here it is. It's also in the chat. If someone wants to just go do a little copy and paste action, but you can join both of these bracket groups and compete against all of us. 
throughout March Madness. I went super chaotic with my bracket this year, Bennett. And as we look at day one games, I already have a lot of upsets that I am anticipating. I was very sad last night watching Indiana State in the NIT, a team that I would have loved to have ridden with throughout March Madness, score 101 points against SMU in the NIT. So while Virginia and Boise State and Colorado couldn't score worth squat, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he actually had an off game, so it wasn't it wasn't really about him. He only had 14 points. But his team, 101 points in the NIT. What are we doing? Yeah, what, what are we doing? What were we doing? All right, everything starts today, 11.15 a.m. Can I interest you in number eight, Mississippi State, number nine, Michigan State. Eating that cinnamon roll was a choice because now I'm going to be burping through the rest of the show. Yeah, and this one's, uh, I mean, it's going to probably <laughs> tip off, be close to a pick em, So it's up in there. I mean, it's hard to bet against Tom Izzo in the NCAA tournament, you know? like It's easy for me. It is? It's easy for me. I have this Mississippi State team. You like Don't them. look now. I have them beating North Carolina in the second round. Really? This is my problem this year and every year. I get real swept up in the stories of it all, Bennett. Yeah. And this is my final, from my local news days when I covered high school basketball in this city extensively and got to see some great players come through here, covered James Wiseman here, covered Alex Lomax and the whole East crew with Penny Hardaway Mm -hmm. uh, when he was the head coach at East before taking over at Memphis. But two players that I had a really great time covering that I actively wanted to drive out to Olive Branch, Mississippi to go to their games was DJ Jeffries and Cam Matthews. And they are like best buds. I forget about DJ being and on that team. And they play yep. for Mississippi State. Yep. And I know DJ Jeffries has all the connectivity and the time at Memphis. And I know, I think Drew Hill did an interview with him with and his, his dad, dad yep. going into this tournament saying how, you know, if there had been more defined roles, perhaps there's a universe where DJ is still at Memphis. But he's a Memphis kid, and I want to root for that. And his Mississippi State team has some energy going into the tournament. Okay. I understand the Tom Izzo piece of it. Of course it's hard. I like the Bulldogs, too. I had a brown Bulldog like the Mississippi State Bulldogs, so they always have a (laughs) place in my heart. Yeah, Those are the little things that lead to you making very weird picks in March Madness. So after Mississippi State, Michigan State, which we'll have to watch all by itself, as Will does a little mm, sauce swirl. What kind of sauce? You like buffalo sauce? I love buffalo sauce. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I (laughs) <laughs> I went too hard. It's got a I kick. Too hard. It's got a kick. Too hard. That smells really good, though. I know, but I like I like a lot of buffalo sauce. I put buffalo sauce on quite literally everything. Me too. Eggs, popcorn, Me meats, hard. pasta. I'll get a pasta, like a buttered noodle situation, and I'll just put straight buffalo sauce on it. All right. So for Mississippi State, Michigan State, we've got to ride with that for like 30 minutes on its long. I have the Bulldogs too. So. Congrats. Yeah. We're on the same team. Let's go. Who do you have for the 11:40 game? Number 11, Duquesne against number six, BYU. This is where I tell everybody, I have picked every single 11 seed to beat their sixth seed in the first round of this tournament. There was a big piece yesterday up on ESPN about how 11 seeds are the new 12 seeds. Yeah, Growing right. up, I was always about the 12-5 action, mm-hmm. but that yep. has kind of fallen to the wayside. Now, since 2015, 12 seeds are 9-23 and 23 against five seeds. So that is not that is not good. Since 2015 in the same regard, 11 seeds are 17 and 15. That's a winning record for 11 seeds in that same period. So if I pick all four of them, surely at least one will hit and my first attempt will be Duquesne. Tell me about Duquesne. Are they the I Dukes? Would love are they to the tell Dukes? You, they are. Yep. So Duquesne <laughs> is coached by, stop me if you've heard this one before, LeBron James, former high school coach, Coach Dan Brott. Okay. He coached at Central Michigan. He got All fired. Right. There was a whole situation there. Then he was oh, LeBron's yeah. coach in high school. He asked his players if he could use the N-word, and then he did, and then he was oh, fired. I remember this. And then, I yeah, remember it's a long that and winding story. Tale, but all 11 of his players came to his defense in his attempt for wrongful termination oh, suit. He did lose that suit. Anyway, he's now here. He's at Duquesne. He's going to retire. He's going to retire after this season. So I always look for teams mm, that have something magic. special to play for. This feels like one of them. Um, they're not sexy. They're one of the worst offenses in the Atlantic huh, 10, and good. we've lost some really bad offense over the last couple of nights, so it'll be the same. Top 30 defense nationally. Uh, Their defense would rank 7th in the Big 12. Obviously, BYU is a Big 12 team. And they have a player named Day-Day Adams. So, I like good names. And Day-Day Adams feels like a fun name to cheer for in this Mm -hmm. tournament. And he's a senior. He's averaging 17 points a game. He gets to the free throw line. 
He makes his free throws. He's a 95% free throw shooter in college. Mm, give me that. Give me that in the tournament, and they've won 15 of their last 18. Hold on real quick. Okay. Can, we get, can we get the camera on Will? Will's finna make sure. the Buffalo slide. What's going on? Will, can we, can we get it on him? Let me get out the way. Go ahead and stir it up, and then then let's let's a watch them. A staple of watch put it, parties. Put it on there. Y'all take, the take another bite of the yeah. of the the cinnamon joint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at Will stirring up the pot. I see. Hey, Will, where's that buffalo sauce from? That thing homemade. Homemade, ain't it? Homemade. That thing homemade, baby. Homemade, man. Will, can you tell the people the ingredients? It's similar to Mike's secret stuff. You don't you don't know what's in it, but he get the job done. Will went straight to Bugs Bunny for Mike's secret stuff. As I figure out which camera I'm looking at and how to work this thing. All right, you were saying, what about Duquesne? I don't care about Duquesne. I care about this tournament. <laughs> Have you ever seen oh Friday? my God. Yeah, of course. Day Day is a reputable yeah. name. It's mm -hmm. an amazing name. It's iconic. There you go. Day Day, iconic name. Friday. Okay, who do you have in that game, Bennett? I've got BYU, but I don't feel good about it now. No, you shouldn't. Mm -mm. Day Day Adams coming at you. I don't necessarily feel good about Duquesne, but I have them winning not one, but two games. I just, with BYU, and I don't know anything about them either, but I assume that they probably shoot a lot of threes. And they, Usually yeah, that's a safe mm -hmm, bet. Yeah, Usually so. a safe one. Turn, turn me up. Yeah. What do you mean? Why Why are you making that assumption about BYU? <laughs> because they probably have a lot of white guys on there the team. There we go. Yeah, and there they probably shoot a lot of threes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. High rate of threes. Yeah. Every time you step on a court, if you're playing against a white dude mm -hmm. and nobody's seen him before, the, everybody the assumes he can shoot. He's a shooter. Yep. Get out there on him. That's Which right. is really unfair for the white guys who can't. The expectation going in high that's, with high expectations. That's right. That's now, not unfair. That's a that's an right. that's an unfair reversal advantage for them because privilege. because if you can't shoot now you hit everybody with a shot fake. Right. Our black asses are jumping to contest and you can exactly. put the ball on the ground and go to the rim. I think oh. it's worse. Like I think it's worse for the, the assumption that every white guy can shoot. So if there's a white guy that can't shoot, they're still like. You still have a reason to be like afraid of him because mm -hmm. you don't know if he can really shoot. Now, the stigma with African American guys, we're all athletic. And I'm not. And if you're not athletic and you don't have anything else on your game, then you're just like a, a useless athlete to some extent. Absolutely. CJ, you've never looked more athletic than right now. Thank I just you. want you to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will say, think about all the white dudes who could shoot and how you guys have earned that, right? Yep. Steve Kerr, shooter. Kyle Corver, shooter. Who's another one I'm missing? Kyle Larry, Rittenhouse, Larry shooter. Kevin Herter. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, man. That took a bite of my cinnamon roll, too. Larry. <laughs> Am I wrong? That's okay. No. Okay. You're not wrong. Right. You're not wrong. Here we go. What's the oh, wow. All right, what's the next game? We're talking about BYU Duquesne way too much. 1230. Okay. Akron Creighton. My only note. Akron shouldn't even been, be there. They're only there because Kent State is so stupid and had that bad foul at the end of the game that put yeah. Akron back at the line. So, Creighton it is. My son has the zips because that's a really cool name. I, I know. I, I was like, Noah, I don't know about that one. I really like the Blue Jays in this tournament. I really like Creighton. So. I just like the Big East in this tournament. Yeah. I don't, I've never been a Big East girly, but we're entering this period. Justice for the Big East. Only three teams getting in. Mm -mm. Hey, the quick. disrespect. Yes, CJ. Real quick. If anybody listening to this has a spatula, we need a spatula in here. Stat. All right. Well, we, Big East was Big East. They did them wrong. Only three teams in. Only three. And, it, and it wouldn't be that surprising if all three got to the Final Four, right? Aren't they all in three different mm -hmm. regions? Yes. Creighton, UConn, yes, Marquette, That's one, right. two, three. Like, that wouldn't be that surprising. I can't believe as good as that conference was throughout the course of the year, they only got three teams in. But that's what happens when the bubble shrinks on you. Also, we talked some about um, how we would view teams should they lose, right? And we mm -hmm. talked about the, the um, what is it, Mount West? We were talking West? about the ACC. We were talking, we were talking about, about Virginia representing the ACC and, and we brought, Colorado but we brought State up, representing the Mountain West. There we go, in the Mountain and then West. And Boise State representing the Mountain West last night. So if something happens and UConn only gets to the Sweet 16 and Marquette and Creighton get out early, are we, are we changing how we view the Big East? Mm. Only three teams in, and that's three less than what the Mountain West got in. That's true. I got you. I also I'm go find back. was reminded when it comes to Creighton, they have three former Houston high school yeah, players. Yeah, local connection yeah. there, too, so with the Mason Millers, Miller, right? Mason Miller, Jonathan yep. Lawson, and Brock Weiss, who all played for Houston and all were on the state championship team under Mike Miller. The, uh, Jonathan Lawson thing's interesting because he's not playing a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, again, I'm getting way off track here, but. Be interested to see what happens with him in the offseason. Sure if would. maybe he wants to. Oh, not a loss in homecoming. Maybe he We've wants had to so come on home. 
I welcome it. I love J-Law. Yep. I love the Lawson family. Yep. Then I would still be connected to my high school days. I exactly. thought DJ Jeffries was my last go, but mm -hmm. Jonathan Lawson, they can keep holding on to that one. Okay, uh, the 1 o'clock game yep. is number 15, Long Beach State, taking on number 2, Arizona. Arizona, two seed last year, lost to Princeton. Arizona, one of those very hard to trust teams in March Madness. Just like it does yep. bad things to your tummy. I have them in my final four. I have two bad things to my tummy teams in the final four in Arizona and Purdue. Arizona has to get past the beach first. I would say the beach. Hmm. Beach. Or you beaches. could say, I got, hey. I love so beaches. I've got, um, I've got St. Mary's with the upset in the Elite Eight. Uh, over Arizona. Okay, okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, but, and I've got a contested game versus our New Mexico Lobos. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, right before our then. Our New Mexico Lobos. Yes. Um, that's my adopted NCAA tournament team. They will be playing tomorrow uh, right here inside FedEx Forum. Uh, but the Long Beach State thing, that's the coach that got fired, right? Yes. Yeah. And he did his press conference yesterday and did a whole like George Costanza Seinfeld bit about yeah. it and said, basically, I'm here and I'm not getting paid to be here, so I don't have to answer any of your questions. But he did it in a very like yeah. fun, frivolous way. They mutually agreed to part ways at the end of the season. Okay. And then he <laughs> mutually <laughs> agreed. Right. And that's like telling me that video was Kate Middleton and Will exactly. at the market, but we'll go with it. And he asked for one last ride with his team. Just let me coach him in the conference tournament. What do they do? They mess around. They win the conference tournament. Mm -hmm. Now they're the 15 I seed. I love it. It's one of those where you know I love stories and I love a team that wants to play for its coach and the kumbaya nature of it all. I think Arizona's better oh, this they're year. Oh, they're going to destroy them. Yes. Well, yeah, they're going to destroy them. Yeah. But then I really do think this famous last words, this yep. could be the year Arizona doesn't do me wrong. Yes, CJ? They're a no-no team for me. And they're a bad tummy team. Are, I don't – Bennett, do you have no-no teams where no matter what, as you take another bite of chicken, where no matter what, you're just like, yo, I, I, can't, I can't roll with them. Like my no-no yep. teams are Arizona, Purdue mm – -hmm. Any team coached by Rick Barnes, so Tennessee, Michigan State, they let me down. They lost to MTSU as a as a two C, one C, something like yep. that a couple years ago. Um, and I think those are are it. Like I've got four no nos where no matter what, I don't let them go far. And in my Arizona's bracket. got some weird losses this year. Even one like FAU gets in the tournament because of that win over Arizona. And frankly, I don't think FAU is that great of a basketball team, regardless. Oh so, really? Yeah. So <laughs> why are you doing? Yeah, hot take. Because I'm so sick of people taking FAU in that first round game against. Um, who are they playing in the first round? Why can't I think of the team uh, that they're playing? FAU is playing Northwestern. Yeah. Oh, give me Boo Booey all day. Okay. Boo Booey. Boo Booey. Microwave Boo scorer Booey. for Northwestern. Northwestern. Now, they've been here before. It wasn't that long ago that we were talking about Northwestern. Like, oh, they've never been to a tournament. Well, they've been here. Yeah. And FAU was not a good basketball team. Okay, going through that. They play tomorrow. So we'll, we'll yeah, get to tomorrow. them tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. One day at a time. At 145, number 16, Wagner against number one, North Carolina. Will we have a 16-1 upset this year? I think not, and I don't think it will be a Wagner team that only has seven healthy players who had to play in Dayton in the first four. They won two nights ago, and now they'll go play North Carolina. Completely agree. The only thing I would say is the first four, I think, makes these matchups a little bit more interesting just for the simple fact that you got a team that's just coming off a win and a little momentum, possibly. But no, I think that... First tournament win ever. Yeah, so... I think North Carolina handles it easily, but it's, it could be interesting. Who knows? Okay, at 210, number 14, Moorhead State, takes on number three, Illinois. Oh Mike, do you have Facebook memories, Bennett? <laughs> yes. Are you on Facebook? Uh, no, no, I'm not on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook in about 13 years. At all? Yeah, at That's all. It's incredible. What, yeah. a, what a beautiful, pure I know, it's still there. Been. Mine's still there. And I like, hate get on it all yeah. the time. But one of the only reasons I keep it is because I love getting reminders of, like, this was your stupid status 10 yeah. years ago. And my stupid status 10 years ago was I cannot take an arena chanting Moorhead seriously. And it was like Jessica Benson has checked in for Moorhead State versus mm -hmm. whatever team they were playing. They were in the Denver Regional that year when I lived in Denver. And I love that people are still making those kind of jokes yeah. all these years later. Illinois will win this game, likely. They do turn the ball over a little bit. They're a little messy for a March team. Yeah, another big upset for uh, my son Noah. Oh, he picked uh, yeah, he, State. he's got more head state. He likes. I believe they're okay. the Eagles, or they're they're not the Eagles, but they're they're something. The mascot's an eagle. Let's um, see. But they have a weird, the name is weird. Uh, Beaker the Eagle. Beaker the Eagle, yeah. So we're rolling with Beaker. Um, I'm not, but Noah is, and so I, I support my son and his endeavors. Can you endeavors. tell me where Moorhead State is? Since Moorhead you're now State a fan. University, JB, is it? Is that right? No. I'm going to say. Do not uh, listen to him. I'm going to say Moorhead State is in Alabama. Wrong. 
It's in Kentucky. I was, hey, same same region. Moorhead, Kentucky, to be okay. exact. All right, the next game of the day is one of my starred, excited to watch. Number 11, Oregon, versus number 6, South Carolina. His name is Dana Altman. And he aligns Rubik's Cubes. Are you familiar with that phrase, no. Bennett Doyle? I think it was John Rothstein of college basketball reporting. I fame. love John Rothstein. I do love John Rothstein. I love John Rothstein. He, a couple years ago, made some analogy to Dana Altman being someone who aligns Rubik's Cubes, who puts Rubik's Cubes together every March. Yeah. Because even when it feels like an Oregon team has no chance in hell at right. being competitive, in March, all the pieces fit together somehow. They finished fourth in the Pac-12 in the regular season, and then they went and won the Pac-12 tournament and stamped their AQ into the NCAA tournament. They have that guy um, in Folly Dante who's been there for a minute. They also have a player who used to play for South Carolina. So when you look at revenge oh, okay. game opportunities, Jermaine Cousinard, uh, he's been at Oregon two seasons. He was at South Carolina for three seasons before the two. Oh, my God. What are these? Buffalo chicken sliders? Ooh. Are you trying to kill me this morning? In the, in the best of ways. Tell me what you think about Oregon, another 11 seed that I have winning. So I, I, I could totally see the upset. I'm rooting for South Carolina here just because they have a really cool story. I mean, they were picked, I think, not at the very bottom, but close to the bottom of the SEC to start the season, and they're one of the best teams in the league, which is really cool. I believe first-year head coach at South yep. Carolina. Yep, yep. Um, so it's a good story. I mean, we just talked about Gigi Jackson. That's his alma mater. So I'm rolling yeah, with the Gamecocks. Yeah, don't tell Gigi that I took Oregon. Yeah, Thank I'm you. rolling with the Gamecocks, but could totally see the upset here. I'm I'm going I'm to uh, take Oregon. Uh, Ben, go ahead and get you a body that. I'm just going to keep talking to Phil time so y'all can quite good. Uh, I'm going to take Oregon in that one. South Carolina, according to Ken Ken Palm's luck rating, luckiest team in the tournament, Mm -hmm. one of the luckiest teams in the the nation. Whenever I watch South Carolina, they leave a lot to be desired. Now, granted, I'm watching them in the game at Tennessee. I watched them. Uh, where Auburn beat the hell out of them. So maybe I'm not watching the good games that South Carolina has. I think that they, as good as the record is and as good as they've been in one of the better conferences in the nation, they can they can be in flux a little bit. If they're missing mm-hmm. shots, and this goes for everybody in the tournament, if you're missing shots, can you win games? It's not many teams where you can say, yeah, they can still win. If they, if for whatever reason, offensively, their best player isn't on, or for whatever reason, the shots just aren't falling like they typically fall, they can win. There's not a whole lot of those in the field, three, maybe four teams. South Carolina is not one of them. I like Oregon in that one. I How about the Buffalo Sliders? Delicious. All right. Dude, Absolutely delectable. As a Buffalo sauce connoisseur, I, this is that's top some tier. elite Buffalo. That's some elite Buffalo right there. Is there a secret to the perfect Buffalo sauce that you're allowed to share? Not at the moment. Maybe, maybe, maybe moment. off air, but, oh, but off not air. at the moment. Not at the moment. Well, you guarding this way better than the Tigers guarded all opposing Our offenses. Damn. Damn. I respect it. <laughs> oh, my fault. The Buffalo <laughs> sauce is top tier. Uh, this is why this first day of March Madness is always the best because we are just now getting to our eighth game out of 16 games that we get today. At 3.30, at number 10, Nevada against number 7, Dayton. Uh, I don't really know a lot about this game, but I know I love 10-7 games. Do you have any notes on no. Dayton or Nevada? You? No. Okay, great. Move on. Dayton. I'll take We're going to take a break? Yep. I was just going to go straight through until we take a break. Oh, let's just Gary. go straight through, then we'll get yeah, to Gary. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. You keep uh, now, we're, now, we're, now we're doing on-air stuff. We got to hit three breaks, don't we? No, I don't think so. Oh, we There's don't? There's no rules. It's a mega show. We're doing whatever we, we want we today. Yeah, we this. Look at this CTO right now. We're doing whatever we want. Here's what happens when you don't come to meetings. We talked about this <laughs> in the meeting that you weren't at. Okay, we talked I, about this very <laughs> thing in the meeting you weren't at. I wasn't fell asleep. I wasn't listening either. And I meant to be there. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I woke up at like 2.45 and I thought to myself, oof. I had to sleep to prepare for these beautiful days of March Madness, you know? Ask, ask Jalen if we have to take a break. Jalen, do we have to take a break? If we don't, then keep rolling. Jalen, what is that? We all, all right, want. let's keep going. I want to keep yep. rolling through. All right, at 5.50, so this is when we break into the evening slate right. of games. Uh, number 10, Colorado State, who we saw in the first four the other night, dismantle Virginia. Uh, they take on number 7, Texas. I felt good about the Mountain West, a conference that got six teams in, yeah. even though the seating of those teams felt a little disrespected with two of them having to play in Dayton in the first four. Yep. I lost a little bit of the luster with how Boise State looked last night, but I kind of like that Colorado State team. I like them too. I think the Mountain West is the third best league in the country. Um, so 
I, I'm rolling with the Mountain West teams too. However, I want that Texas Tennessee matchup so bad in the next round yes. that I, I've got to pick Texas I, here. I did, yeah. I, that reminds me, I did pick Texas because I want nothing more than Rick Barnes having to play in altitude against Texas, his former team, right. with a chance to go to the Sweet 16. And we know how Tennessee, you talk about no-no teams, and as CJ said, one of his is Rick Barnes' coach teams, and right now the Vols fit into that predicament. At 6-10, number 14, Oakland, will take on number three. Excuse me? Did you steal one of my sliders? Yeah, we got more coming out. You, you were eating the chicken? I hadn't eaten anything. I haven't eaten anything. We got more coming out. You'll be straight. Well, this is a good one. That was, that was tough. Anyway, we get to see number three, Kentucky. You get to see Rob Dillingham. You get to see Reed yep. Shepard. This is when we get into the future NBA players of it all, which is a very fun sub um, storyline in March Madness outside yep. of the teams and the madness. You're like, ooh, that guy's intriguing. And I know watching Reed Shepard even in the SEC tournament, I started thinking to myself, ooh, I love Reed Shepard, but is he even the best team on Ken best player on Kentucky? Uh, we will see who performs the best. I would anticipate this Kentucky team is built to get through Oakland. Yeah, Gary told a great story about Oakland's head coach last week who almost died of oh, kidney don't get, stones. Don't yeah. get me with a head coach exact, story, Bennett. Uh -huh, You'll pull uh -huh. me back. Yeah, this man faced death and overcame it. So I just want to throw that out there. I think Kentucky probably handles it. Oh my God. Tough. He beat death. He won't beat Kentucky. That's, that's right. That's, what, that's what, what I'm Luke, thinking. You hear me? Come in here and get some of these. Will is making the uh, pizza egg rolls right there. We can get the camera on him. I'm so full. No, well, get ready because we still got more stuff coming. Pizza egg rolls? Yeah, yeah. That sounds incredible. Yes, it, it sure yes. does. So okay. he, he pre made the filling and everything. So it's sausage and pepperoni and cheese, mozzarella. I can't believe you just stole my slider right out. You Jessica, can't do that to an only got, child. I'm Jessica, not built for that. We've got like two minutes until these come out. As soon as okay. they come out, I'm giving them to you. You didn't even offer me half of your chicken uh, sandwich. Well, I, I can only eat a little bit at a time. Okay. I have things to discuss. And All speaking right. of coaching stories, I got swept away this morning, Bennett, yep. by Will Wade, who is the coach of McNeese now. Will Wade of Strong Ass Offer, Hall of Fame. He now coaches at McNeese after he got the show calls, got fired from LSU, all of that that occurred with the, the big old FBI investigation that was going to destroy college basketball. And now we're left in 2024 and we're like, well... Everyone does it. Let's all pay everyone with NIL. Um, they play Gonzaga, and CJ really likes this McNeese team. I am a little skeptical of their strength of schedule, but I read this long, winding piece about Will Wade up at The Athletic on how he gets to McNeese, how the athletic director at McNeese took a chance on him, essentially, not knowing if the NCAA was going to come back and be like, no, this guy can't coach for you know three more years. And then what was this athletic director going to do? He's an AD who is a former coach, and he had a variety of assistant coaching jobs along the way. Mm -hmm. So a different mentality going into it. And he put all his eggs into... Will Wade, and now Will Wade has turned around this McNeese team and has them as a 12 seed, and I kind of like them. I've talked myself into them this morning. So is the rest of the country. I know. That's which why y'all are so wrong. The, the, the Mark Few is not. This is going to be easy. This I'm is Mark I, Few. I, I, am, I, I would be willing to bet that this game is not even close to the most interesting game today. I, I think, think that Gonzaga beats the crap out of them. I think Ooh. I saw. Yeah. Uh, nah, I think I saw. We were talking about odd, on odds couple. So go Grind City Media subsidiary. Yep. We gave our March Madness preview. Jessica was kind enough to join us. We talked about the 5-12 games and how most of the money is on the 12 seeds this year. And I can't remember the exact percentages, but I think – 88% of the money as of yesterday was on McNeese State in this mm, game. Yep. I think the there was a, a 5-12 matchup with 81% of the money on the, the 12. And then the other two 12s had like 65, 66% of the money on them. It's a popular thing to do. We get one of these. We don't get more than one. What do we need, Will? Is that, are those done? No, oh, take yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Got him. My fault. I'm my what's bad. Up, what's up next? The pizza uh, rolls? Say what? The pizza rolls? No, the pizza rolls hadn't come out. We still oh. making that. He's prepping the pizza rolls. Darnell, I heard you come up here. Come in here and uh get you some of this, Darnell. <laughs> this is well, like the best. And Darnell, day. come in here right now. Don't make me ask you again. I feel like we're really making a lot of people jealous out there, but too bad, so sad. We are sharing. Anyone in the building right now is free to come up and get some food. We have tons of it. All right, let's try to speed race through these before Gary joins us at the top of the hour. At 635, number 15, South Dakota State. Number two, Iowa State. I've got Iowa State. I don't have an upset from the Jackrabbits. At 820, 
Bennett, number 15, St. Peter's, against number two, Tennessee. Tennessee has to get through that to get to the Texas game that we just talked about. St. Peter's is trying to come in. The rebranded Peacocks, a team that made the magical run a couple years ago. Obviously, all new players there as well as a new coach yep. after that magical March run. Um, I just like the Peacocks. Did your son pick the Peacocks? He did not. <gasps> um, no, he no, picked uh, the balls. I know. I know. I was, I was pissed. What? I almost disowned him. Yeah, I almost disowned him, but that's okay. Um, no, we got the balls here. The one that you were talking about, what was the game you were talking about South right before Dakota that? South Dakota State, Iowa State. Noah has Iowa State winning the national championship. Oh, yeah, so I like the Cyclones. the Cyclones. Yeah, it's yeah, a cool mascot. It, unique. Yep, yeah, unique. Uh, so I I have Iowa State going far as well. I'm with you. That that game's probably not going to be interesting. Um, the Tennessee-St. Peter's thing is interesting just because, again, you had the St. Peter's. Was that last year, the St. Peter's story? Or it was two years? Uh, two years ago. Two years ago. That's awesome for that school. Yeah. I mean, that is a small university. Like, I, I was – because you do, like – do you ever, these schools that you've never heard of, go, like, on your Google Maps yes. or whatever and, and, like, look around the campus and look at yes. all the photos? Dude, that is, like, one of the smallest colleges I've ever seen. Like, it, it's like a couple buildings. Yeah, it's tiny. Yeah. And their enrollment went up. Like, it yeah. was such a so testament awesome for to what happens yeah. during a tournament run. But the, And that's the, the thing about these tournaments is that's why you want your team as an administrator to do well. Yes. Because your enrollment goes, Florida Gulf Coast, right, their enrollment right. goes up. Michigan, Michigan is a bigger school, but that the Fab Five years, enrollment goes yeah. up. Being successful at this level in men's and women's college basketball leads directly to increased enrollment, yep. which is good for your university. What are we going to do if Barnes doesn't get to – is the Sweet 16 enough? Does he have to get past the Sweet 16? And I what do we do Sweet if he doesn't get there? It's flames. <laughs> I don't think that – I don't think that – Winning at a high level in the regular season in the SEC has to count for something, I think, and he's going to be able to do that. He's been doing that, so I don't think if he, you know, gets upset early that his his job's in any jeopardy or anything like that. But it's clearly a thing. Yeah. I mean, my gosh, if he lo if he loses to Texas, Tennessee fans are going to be like, we're never going to be able to get this done, yeah. right? And so, and then so <laughs> it's not about regular season success. It's about regular season and conference tournament yep. and the big dance. If he can't get the job done in the big dance and for his career, I feel like he's been coaching since the 80s. Benny, can you help me out with that? Like, look yep. that up because I think he's been coaching mm -hmm. since the 80s and has been to a handful of of Sweet 16s, I don't think very many, if any, Elite Eights, I'm, I feel confident in saying no Final Fours. And he's been coaching for a long time. How much longer can you ride with him if you're not having the postseason success that, you know, you you desire? Because eventually it's, it's all well and good to be winning in the regular season. It's all well and good to have regular season titles. But eventually the fan base just wants more. Jessica, you said yeah, two Elite Eights. He, went to, he to, went to a Final Four with Texas. Okay. So yeah. you said one. How long one. has he been coaching? Forever. Yeah, since like eighty seven. <laughs> like most of the people I mean, my in the studio sixty nine years old. Like, nice. nice. Most of the people in the studio weren't born when he started coaching. You right. said he has to get past the sweet sixteen. That's right? how it feels that there is a point in time. He maybe not past it for job security. You've got to at least get to the second weekend or Vols fans are going to lose their mind. And uh -huh. you just become, you continue to be a March joke. No one wants to be a March joke. No one wants to be the bad pit in your tummy team. But that's where Rick Barnes has this group. All right, real quickly. Yeah. Uh, NC State, Texas Tech. NC State's an 11 seed, so you know I have them winning that game. That tips off at 840. At 855, number 13, Samford against number four, Kansas. Everybody is picking Samford after the news that Kansas is no. not their best player. And I agree. It makes me super skeptic on picking against Kansas in the first round. Depth-wise, they'll have trouble making their way through the tournament but I think the first round, they may get out of there with a win. And then the late game tonight tips at 9.05. It is number seven, WSU, against number 10, Drake. As your Pac-12 princess, I, of course, am rolling with the Washington State Cougars. They are long. They are really solid offensively. And they are the underdogs as the seven seed. And that will be my final pick of the night. And Mr. Obama, as Clay Thompson said in his postgame press conference last night, Mr. Obama picked the Cougs. Yeah, so and I mean, it's I always like kind of read into this stuff, like the con whole conspiracy theory. It's interesting that it's the last game, that it's the late game. It just kind of, it always makes me think, oh, they think it's going to be real tight, that this one's okay, going to be real. Okay, but our late game here tomorrow night, you yeah, know what it is? What? Houston Longwood. Okay, so there you At go. like 930. Yeah, there you go. So, so it's all, you know. I'm with works. you. I'm with the Cougs, right. too. We got to take a break because we got to get to Gary Parrish. Yep. He is super busy, but he's going to join the GCM Mega Show when we come back here on Grand City Media. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. 
Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limit time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime Hello. for Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine-free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip-hop could be hop-hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're recruiting the best talent to help us develop the sustainable steel needed for today and tomorrow. Join us at the edge of the future. Visit www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. We're going dancing. Welcome to Fandom 101. We need you going crazy in the stands. Oh! Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Division I men's basketball first and second rounds this March in Memphis, Tennessee. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash MBB tickets. Class dismissed. Welcome back to the GCM Mega Madness Show. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I do love the March Madness music. The second it starts before Selection Sunday, I get the little goosebumps. Yeah. And then the second oh, yeah. it starts today, I'm like, oh, I'm doing nothing but watching basketball all day. Somebody who also will be doing nothing but watching basketball all day is Gary Parrish. GP, how's New York City? It's actually cold. It's very oh, cold here dis today. Disappointing. It's beautiful here. Oh, it's very cold here. I haven't checked the temperature, but when I walked outside this morning to get a nice cup of coffee, um, I was chilly. I wasn't properly prepared, and now I've got a real disaster on my hands. Oh. I know I, I know I'm too blessed to to be stressed. I don't always feel that way, but mm -hmm. I know I am that way. But buddy, today I've got a real disaster in front of me. It appears my MacBook cord is oh, going no. out a little bit. Oh, I no. might have I just told you how cold it is here in New York City, Jess. I might have to walk to the Apple store at Central Park <gasps> to get a new MacBook cord today, and that's going to be about a that's going to be a 10 minute walk where I am I'm in frigid temperatures. Are you talking about the Upper West Side Apple Store by Lincoln Center? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Low this would be more lower east at the at the uh, southeast corner of Central Park. Oh, the one that where it used to be the FAO Schwartz. That's right. Yeah, yeah by the right plaza. there. Yeah, right there by uh, Sarah Bass and yes. I mean it's right there oh. at the yeah. I love Sarah, Sarah Bass. Bass. Oh. Everybody everybody on the planet Love Sarah Bess. It's I'm shocked wonderful. that Sarah Beth is, is still as popular as it was when I was in high school and would go to New York. All me and my friends would meet up at Sarah Beth's. And you know what? The girlies still do it, GP. It's the place oh, to I be. I was at Sarah Beth's. I won't say recently, but certainly within the past year. I don't go there by myself. But anytime Kelly and the boys are up here, we, we, we usually hit Sarah Beth's at least one morning. We went to Sarah Beth's on the Upper West Side, so not the Central Park one. And guess who walked out? Keenan Thompson. <laughs> How about that? Keenan Thompson. Were, 
you will often see I, one time Kelly and the boys were up here and they went to Sarah Best without me. And she was like, I just saw a celebrity in Sarah <laughs> Best. And I said, really, who did you see? And she said, I just saw Aaron Andrews. I was like, well, I mean, I could te I could I could share. I could text Aaron Andrews and tell her to come have breakfast with you if you wanted me to. But that was when uh, she was just coming off dancing with the stars. And she really was like all over the place. So, yes, yeah, Sarah. Sarah Bess is a is a good place to, to celebrity watch. And and if you unless you got reservations, don't show up, buddy, because it's a line out the door. OK, so what does your day look like today, GP? We are getting all of our work out of the way. And I'm so sad for you that you can't be in studio with us because Will Coleman is in here cooking up a feast. We have cinnamon roll fried chicken. We have s'mores cake. We have buffalo sliders. We have pizza roll egg rolls coming out. You are in a hotel room. What will your viewing experience be like? What shows are you on all day? Well, first, I got to go to the Apple store. Well, right. We got to get your cord situation figured out. Got to get my cord situation. And look at Will. Like, I'm always impressed by people who can build things. That's what that's what that is. He built that. Yeah. I'm always impressed he's by people who. I, he's a, he's a, I always impressed by people who can build and who take. Look how careful he's being. I've never been that careful with a cake or a knife in my either one. Like, it, it, independent of each other. I, if I'm holding a knife, I'm not that careful. If I'm holding a cake, I'm not that careful. I just appreciate people who have the patience to to be excellent at, at stuff like that. Okay, so once I get done with the Apple Store, I'm going to settle back here in the hotel, I think. And I'll just watch games like everybody else. Our call time is at 4. And then I'm in, I have a weird schedule. It's this, um, we're actually on throughout the night. Carry, really, we're on right now. I mean, we're, there, we're, there, we're on all day carrying press conferences and showing highlights and having discussions in studio. But you're often asking people to, like, watch you instead of watch games, which I know is a tough ask, so I don't even try. But I'll be in studio really throughout the night, and then I'll take a break from TV at midnight Eastern to podcast for 30 minutes and then I'll be back in studio at 1 a.m. Eastern. We'll doing a full wrap-up show from 1 to 2 Eastern. I guess that's midnight to 1 Central. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. So if you need me, I'll be up to about 5, 6 a.m. every morning. Oh, that's casual. That's good. What game today are you most getting up for? Like of all the first-round matchups, of all the 16 games today, what is the one game that you are most excited to watch? I don't know about excited, but certainly interested in just to see how it goes. Kansas Sanford, it's late tonight. Ooh. Obviously, Sanford is a fun style of basketball. It's a great story. Bucky McMillan's the coach. He's a high school coach in Alabama, like not too long ago. Now he's got Sanford into the NCAA tournament. And they're sort of a, um, I don't know, a, a, an upset pick for many. A, because they're just fun. Like, they're going to get up and down the court. Top 15 tempo in the country. Uh, a little more than 40% of their shots are coming from three. So it's an exciting modern style of basketball. And then on the other side, you've got Bill Self, Kansas, you know, Blue Blood program, Hall of Fame coach, two-time national champion. And they just announced a couple of days ago that their best player and leading scorer, Kevin McCullough, is out for the NCAA tournament. People have interpreted that a variety of ways. One way is to just say, I guess, Kevin McCullough is too hurt to play. That's unfortunate. What a bad break. The other way to interpret it is Kevin McCullough might be hurt, but isn't too hurt to play, but is being shut down by people around him. And Bill Self is furious at this situation. And that's why Bill said, you know what? We're done with this. I don't care if we make the national championship game in three weeks. He ain't playing for us anymore. We're done. I think the latter is closer to the truth. So there's a little bit of a, a interesting story there um, where – it, it, it at least appears to me that the Kansas staff and Kansas' best player got sideways in recent days, and now Kansas is going to have to move forward um, without a guy who has been one of the best two-way players in the sport for two straight years now. Kansas, which was your preseason number one team, is now, I think, at real risk of maybe losing in the first round tonight. GP, that's an excellent point. I need to try this very moist s'mores cake. Okay. From, this is uh, amazing. Um, Anything s'mores related. Life changing. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, s'mores cake, cracker, s'mores pie, s'mores anything. S'mores cookies. S'mores anything. I agree. I think s'mores is a top tier flavor. Of anything. S'mores, s'mores, cereal. s'mores cereal. S'mores cereal. S'mores Girl Scout cookies. I love those s'mores Girl Scout cookies. Oh, the best kind. The anyway, best kind. That, that cake is amazing. I need yeah. you to talk me out of a couple things today, Gary. And we're sure, going to start sure. with McNeese and Will cake Wade. Cake for breakfast. Cake for breakfast. Start there. You're not going to talk me out of cake for breakfast. I had oatmeal cake. before I left, so this is lunch. Okay, so this is lunch. But you're you're ahead of schedule now. You're ahead of schedule now. 
I mean, I've had half a cinnamon roll and two bites of cake. I might die by the time this show ends. But... Uh, 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 and by the way, who am I? Who am I to be uh, judging your eating habits? You eat whatever yeah. you want, Jess. I don't care. Yeah. Don't don't you know I've never counted calories, Gary? Come on. I, I, oh, I saw that. Back to that one. I saw that commercial for six weeks. <laughs> for six that was definitely all weeks. That, that was that was just as famous as a Zaire Williams commercial. Or Taylor Swift. Pick, oh, stick God. a T Swift. Any T Swift. CJ, what oh, did you God. run on? I just. During Women's History Month, Gary, we can't be out here telling women what they can and can't. Yeah, what eat. is this? 2002? I, we've got, they've got to be able to I, eat what I, they want, Gary. I didn't. I, I did. I don't think. I think you could run the tape. I didn't tell anybody what to eat. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I just know when I look up and I'm starting. Yeah, I'm eating cake for breakfast. I know I'm in for a calorie-filled day. <laughs> Do you know? Do you do you know? I, I I read this somewhere. Like I I also don't count calories, but and I know it doesn't look like it, but I do try to like you know you know I'm not trying to eat pizza for breakfast. I'm trying to be you know I'm not trying to eat pizza at one o'clock in the morning that type of stuff. I'm trying to be it's somewhat sensible. Right. And I read one time, if you ever do, maybe slip up is not the right word, but like, let's say you're really trying to watch what you're eating and you're like, say on a low carb or a no carb diet and you're like, ah, but I really just, I'll have this one roll for, for lunch. It triggers something in your head that makes you go, well, I've already screwed up the yes. day, so it doesn't matter now. And then you're just all in. You're just yes. all over it. There's something that happens to you like that, which I think is interesting. Yeah, it is a psychological nightmare, which means that the rest of my day is about to go completely off the yeah. rails. Because I do try to eat well during the week. But and it's, it's wait, Thursday, oh, but it's March Madness. It's, it's March Madness. Madness. Are we not, not all eating uh, like right. shit day, and yeah. drinking profusely right. today? Right. It's true. Y'all are lucky I'm sober right now. Never forget I'm just draft having, show 2020. I'm just having coffee. I'm just having coffee. <laughs> just a Dunkin'. Is that a Short King coffee? Is that a Short yeah. King coffee? Yeah. I'm, I'm, also, I'm also watching my coffee. Did you order it as a Short King coffee? This is what Dunkin' did this week. They renamed their small coffee Short King coffee. Short King oh, no. free. I didn't, did they really? I didn't even, yes. I didn't even know that's what I was doing. I just oh, walked in so and she, did. she said, what size? And I said, I'll take a small. That's all. That's well, it. You it ordered a, incorrectly. And the next time, please amend your ways. It is a Short King coffee. Coffee. All right, back to things I need. I need help. Yeah, I, I okay. honestly yeah. am too. Okay. First, the calories. Now, the anti short king. Uh, it is what it is. Um, when it comes to McNeese State and Will Wade, mm -hmm. and I have finally tumbled into the, oh, I kind of want Will Wade and McNeese to win. I watched the video of him at Selection Sunday, just hooping and hollering with his team. I read an athletic piece this morning about, you know, being the American gangster, Will Wade. It feels like everybody, all the energy is on McNeese against Gonzaga this afternoon. Tell me why I should not switch my pick and continue with Mark Few and Gonzaga making it out of the first round. Because Gonzaga's better. Okay, great. Thank you. So, so, so like, easy, you, so simple. You, yeah, you've got the better team. Um, but the better team doesn't always win in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, that's March Madness. It's why I actually struggle picking a bracket, going through a bracket, because it, it like my brain is wired in a way where if something doesn't make sense, I can't make it make sense. Okay. And if something doesn't make sense, I can't um, then say, well, that doesn't make sense, but let's just do it anyway. I'm not a let's just do it anyway guy. I'm like, <laughs> if it doesn't make sense, let's not do it. And so. I, I, I get a bracket, it's placed in front of me, and it's seated erratically in some places, but still, for the most part, in, in a way that makes some sense. And so what people want to see from your bracket is like lots of upsets, like, ooh, ooh, look at this one. He picked a 12 over a 5. That's he's got some balls, whatever. Um, and then, but but then logically that doesn't make sense to me because it's like I've been watching Gonzaga McNeese State, both of these teams all season long. I know which team is better. Gonzaga's better. That's why they're uh, the five seed and McNeese is the 12. That's why they were ranked and McNeese wasn't. That's why they're higher in every single computer that exists. Um, so I guess I'll take Gonzaga. And that's the way I go through the bracket. I'm just logically trying to make picks that make sense. And then the bracket starts to unfold. The games, the ball is tipped and nothing makes sense. And my bracket looks like crap. And in the rare instance that my bracket looks good, it will only ever be because the teams that were supposed to win largely did win, at which point nobody takes your bracket seriously because they say, oh, look at the ball-headed uh, college basketball expert. Oh, <laughs> look how smart he is. He just picked all the favorites to win. 
Oh, congratulations. I should get as smart as you. So it really is just a, a no-win situation. But to answer your question, the reason you should stick with Gonzaga is because Gonzaga has been the better team all year long, and I suspect that Gonzaga will be the better team in this uh, in this round of 64 matchup. Mm, but you're telling me the reason I should pick McNeese is because crazy as happens this time that's of the, year. I mean, well, that, that's the thing. It's like um, you can I could break down not any game, but some of these games right. with in, like very detailed basketball stuff and tell you the numbers that make it make sense where it'd be crazy to do anything other than pick this team, and then that team will go out and lose by 12. That's just the nature of the tournament. I am upset uh, filled this year in my bracket, perhaps more so than any year before. I'm calling it a testament to the Cinderella's, and it's a direct response to Greg Sankey's comments and the sanctity of Cinderella's and small schools in the NCAA tournament. But like, all jokes aside, I have every single 11 seed winning, Gary, which feels a little uh, radical and maybe too far. So if you could talk me out of one of those 11 seeds. So you have Duquesne, mm -hmm. you have New Mexico, mm -hmm. you have Oregon, and you have NC State. Tell me which of those four I should not have winning in the first round. Well, I, I don't think any of them are like there's no way they would win. I mean, they would they would win. I think they could all those are all winnable games. Um, as somebody who looked at the stuff every morning throughout the season, ranking 26 basketball teams, when you start talking about those six seeds, those are going to be teams that were in the, you know, bottom part of the top 25 and one or just outside of the top 25 and one much of this season. So I, I was focused on on those teams for for you know, it, it, you know, basically after every game, looking at resumes and evaluating resumes, and they're all capable of winning these games. But I, I think BYU Duquesne is a is a place to look. Duquesne was, um, you know, they're an automatic bid for a reason. They had no shot at the NCAA tournament without winning their conference tournament. Um, it's a great story with Keith Dambrot and. Um, you know, as, as someone who sits in CBS Sports Network studios throughout the year and uh, often on Tuesday nights, we're having at least one A-10 game. I've watched that league a lot. Um, and I can just tell you that, you know, Duquesne is not on the same level as as BYU. Um, the, BYU has not only been a favorite among the computers for much of the season, but um, in that first year in the Big 12, like actually represented itself pretty well. So, yeah, it's a 40 minute game and a single elimination tournament. Anything could happen. But we've been playing basketball for more than four months now, and there's never been a single day, not one, where anybody thought Duquesne was a better basketball team than BYU. Pizza egg rolls might be better breakfast than the s'mores cake. See, uh, you should mix them. To, you should mix them together. These pizza egg rolls are insane. These pizza egg rolls are one of the best things that I've ever. Well, tried. I mean, I don't, I don't well, even think well, it's well, like. Spice? Is yes. that a little spice to them? Okay, yes. so I wouldn't even categorize. It's you know what it's more like. It's more like a pizza uh, toasted ravioli. Yep. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. Like the the pizza rolls. It's just a pizza roll. Yeah. That's but what the, it tastes like. It's the crispiness of the whatever this thing is called that covers it that makes it almost yeah. chip like. Um, yeah, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, y'all yeah, yeah, taking a wild, wild route to just say you're eating pizza rolls for breakfast. <laughs> no, this ain't a okay, pizza no, roll. there's a this very specific difference, but I will say it did burn the shit out of the roof of my mouth, just like a pizza roll. Would. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> that's the, that's thing. the thing about a pizza roll, buddy. If you if you go too early, if you go too early, you take that first bite and then pop. And it's, it's like, over. It's over with. You just you just scolded your mouth. You got to be careful, <laughs> and it's tough to be careful with pizza rolls. Because they're so good. Like, who does Like, I don't know anybody on the planet outside of, uh, you know, healthy people who don't enjoy pizza rolls. No, absolutely not. Although I will say my hot take is that bagel bites are better than pizza rolls. Bagel bites also burn your mouth. Mm. But I love the bagel texture of the breading on a, on a bagel bite versus a pizza roll. But they're all great. They all come out hot, fresh out the oven. When mom serves them, there is no better day in the world. Well, it's just it, it's smart for people like Will. Uh, to experiment with, and you go, I think this you can do this in, in any uh, number of ways, but like, what do people like? People like egg rolls. Okay, cool. What else do people like? Pizza. All right, cool. I'm going to make pizza or egg rolls then. You're combining two things that people love into one thing people love. It's a, that, that, That's a recipe for success. It feels like something that many people would love. Gary, can you give me any update on Tyler Kolick at Marquette? Because Marquette is my... Uh, Final Four champion pick because I'm trying to do something a little bit different than everybody else, and I believe that he has the potential to prove that he's the best point guard in the country, but I really need him to play for Marquette. 
He will play. I talked yeah. to Shaka Smart, his coach, on Sunday. And it's interesting. Tyler Kolick was ruled out with an oblique injury um, at the end of the regular season. And they just sort of immediately said he's not playing for at least a week or two weeks. It was it, 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 very much the way NBA franchises deal with injuries as opposed to college teams deal, deal with injuries. Because Marquette was pretty transparent and just like, hey, this ain't no day-to-day -day thing. This is going to be a minute. And it just sort of occurred to me as I was reading about this a few weeks ago, that I had never um, had an oblique injury and wasn't even really clear hmm. on what they were. And uh, so I Googled, what is an oblique injury? <laughs> what does an oblique injury feel like? Just very basic stuff. And I swear to God, you could do this on your own. That it, I said, what does an oblique injury feel like? If you have one, what does it feel like? And it said, it feels like you're being stabbed with a knife. Hmm. I said, Jesus, Lord. So I'm talking to Shaka on us, Sunday. Us women deal with that once a month, Gary, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys got it so tough, don't we, you? We know, we know exactly what that feels like. Yeah, I had kidney stones once. That, oh, that felt like it, it hurt. So what you deal with once a month, I dealt with once. <laughs> Basically it, equal. That's it's, quality, baby. It's kind of the same thing. It's kind of the same thing. So um, I, uh, I asked Shaka about this. I, t I told Shaka the same story I told you. And he said, GP, when, when, when Tyler came out of the game, it was against Providence, I think. When he came out of the game and we were like, what's wrong? He said, it hurts to breathe. Oof. Like, I can't breathe. It hurts. Like, I have a sharp pain when I take a breath. Now, I don't know how much you know about breathing, but you got to do it. <laughs> to live. As a, you have to do it to live. So imagine if you have to do something. Imagine if every bite of that pizza egg roll <laughs> made you feel like you were being stabbed in the mm. chest. Might but be you, worth but, it. <laughs> but you, I know, right? But you had to take a bite every 30 seconds. And every 30 seconds, it felt like you were getting stabbed in the chest. That's where Tyler Kolick was. But what Shaka told me uh, Sunday night was that the pain's gone. So the pain's mm -hmm. gone. Now it's just about getting back into basketball shape and getting back into a rhythm. But he will play in Marquette's opener and uh, be in the backcourt alongside Memphis's finest, Cam Jones, who, by the way, is Marquette's leading score. If you're trying to find uh, a more overlooked leading score on a top 10 team, a top two seed in the country, you ain't gonna find one more than, than Cam Jones, my little homie from Memphis. So I'm hoping in addition to Tyler Collett returning and playing well, Cam Jones has an NCAA tournament that will remind at the very least people who vote in Big East polls that this guy deserved to be all conference. I don't know how you could lead a top 10 team in scoring and not be an all conference player, but uh, Cam Jones wasn't. Perhaps he can uh, prove some people wrong this week. Okay, so Cam Jones could be an answer to my next question for you. Obviously, this time of year, like a player breaks out. A player becomes a fan favorite, a nation's favorite, has the opportunity to make some noise. I know I told you I'm psyched to see Kasey Tominaga with Nebraska mm -hmm. here in Memphis starting tomorrow. But is there a player that you most think could have that kind of emergence that perhaps people aren't necessarily looking for going into this tournament? Um, you watch well, a lot of college basketball, I know. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously easier. I mean, like, if you're talking about, I'll name somebody that most people watching and listening right now don't know who he exists, but if he has a big game, his story could be like on CBS Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Miles Rice at Washington State. Okay. He, he's not their leading scorer. He was for much of this season, but he's probably first team all freshman in America. But you wouldn't think of him that way because you'd be like, oh, wow, first team all freshman at Washington State. GP, where was he ranked in uh, the class of 2023? Well, he wasn't in the class of 2023. Well, then where was he ranked in the class of 2022? He wasn't in the class of 2022. Well, then what is going on here? Well, he's been in college for three years, but he's just now playing because he redshirted his freshman year and his sophomore year he was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. So he was dealing with chemotherapy treatments and um, you know, a, a life-altering, scary situation. Thankfully, he has uh, his cancer is in remission. He hasn't had chemo treatments in more than a year, and he is starring for Washington State and is among the reasons, if not the biggest reason, they are surprisingly in the NCAA tournament after being picked um, near the bottom of the Pac-12 in the preseason. So um, there's one. Like, that, that, that's a young man who could go for 30, and you're like, who is this? And yeah. when you Google who is Miles Rice, it's like cancer, uh, been in school three years, just now playing, and that's obviously perfect for those Sunday morning shows. So Miles Rice is a is a nice possibility there. But I think, you know, you're looking at – if you're wondering who could really become a star of the sport, it, it Dalton Connect 
is yeah. obvious a yeah. candidate. You know, he could go out and get 30, 35 at, at any point. So I, I think among the reasons people are picking Tennessee to go deep, even though Rick Barnes typically doesn't, is because sometimes in the NCAA tournament, it really does just come down to, hey, we're in a tight game, six minutes to go, one possession. Can you go win this for us? And Dalton Connect's the type of guy who can just go win your game. Rick hasn't had a lot of those guys. Kevin Durant, obviously, one of them a long time ago. Last year, didn't have one of those guys. It was tough. Um, this year, he's got one of those guys, and it's why Tennessee is, I, I think, a legitimate you know, Final Four national championship contender. Yeah, Dalton Connect, very fun. Per your first option with Washington State. That's why I like Grand Canyons, Ty and Grant Foster, who came back from two heart surgeries. And go. why would you pick about against a national park, Gary? Why would you not want to root for a national park? Grand Canyon, I, I, one of the prettiest. I, got, I have Grand Canyon in the Sweet 16, yes! so I'm I'm pro national parks. Don't what? hey, don't Protect don't ever let it, GP. don't ever. Don't ever let the chat say <laughs> GP's not for the national park because I, I just proved that I am. I, I thought never. we were rolling with the Bennett legacy with the Gales, man. You know, told me that's. The, I got him in the final four. You got I me all hyped. Wow. I know Bennett, but I, for, I forgot. When I filled out my bracket, I forgot everything we'd ever talked about. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm locked in. I'm locked into Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. We love parks. We love cake for breakfast. GP, we love you. Thanks for joining us during your busy time. Enjoy basketball all day. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to do this cold walk to the Apple store. I'll I see you guys later. Hope your computer gets nice and charged. We'll see you later. That was Gary Parrish. Yes, Bennett? Dude. He literally led me to believe that St. Mary's is like speak on it the best team in the country, mm -hmm. the most underrated team in the country. Mm -hmm. I put them in the final four. Randy Bennett, head coach, we're carrying on the Bennett legacy. Now he hits me with Grand Canyon's gonna upset them in the first round. Come on, dude. I have Grand Canyon upsetting them in the first round. Nah, man. We're rolling with the Gales. It's gonna, Sorry, y'all. Gonna be brutal when Ty and Grant Foster goes off for 40. Dude, a national park has never won anything in sports, okay? The national parks need our help. No, they, not when it comes to sport. We need to, we need to help them in other ways. When it comes to the NCAA tournament, I don't want anything to do with the national parks, all right? I wish there was a Zion University. A Yellowstone University. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yellowstone University. A Glacier. University oh, cool. how, how sick would Glacier University? Mm -hmm. I'd pick Glacier in every Everglades single Everglades University, ever. yeah. The Grand Teton University. How'd Grand Canyon get up on this mix? I know. I how the hell did that happen? I don't know. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the GCM Mega Madness show continues. Chris Vernon and John Roser are going to join. They're going to take the reins for the rest of the morning. And then March Madness starts at 11.15 Central Time. We'll be back. GCM Mega Madness show it's more fun to be there live to see the memphis grizzlies hit the court all season long from the electricity and fedex forum to the highlight reel plays there's nothing quite like grizzlies basketball as the official marketplace of the memphis grizzlies ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats so get off the couch and into the stands while you still can score tickets today at ticketmaster.com that's Ticketmaster.com. Looking for a full court dining experience? Dribble over to Southland Casino Hotel, your ultimate gaming oasis in West Memphis. As a proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies, we're inviting you to savor the flavors at our eight incredible dining venues. Ignite Steakhouse is where culinary excellence gets grilled. Indulge in charcoal grilled steaks and farm to table favorites, perfectly paired with wine or handcrafted cocktails. Enjoy an all access buffet experience at the kitchens or revel in comfort food and Southern classics at the fry house. If casual is more your thing, sample the innovative fare at Seasons Cafe, while Chairman's Bar and Charred Oak Bourbon Bar serve up cocktails and live concerts every week. For those on the go, The Grind is your one-stop coffee shop with gourmet brews and grab-and-go goodies. And of course, we can't forget the Sports Bar and Grill, where you can catch all the Grizzlies action with the best pub fare in town. At Southland Casino Hotel, we've got the perfect dining experience for you, so come on down and ignite your taste buds today. Must be 21 plus. Play responsibly for help quitting. Call 800-522-4700. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. 
Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board. A class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Looking for a full court dining experience? Dribble over to Southland Casino Hotel, your ultimate gaming oasis in West Memphis. As a proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies, we're inviting you to savor the flavors at our eight incredible dining venues. Ignite Steakhouse is where culinary excellence gets grilled. Indulge in charcoal grilled steaks and farm to table favorites, perfectly paired with wine or handcrafted cocktails. Enjoy an all access buffet experience at the kitchens or revel in comfort food and Southern classics at the fry. House. If casual is more your thing, sample the innovative fare at Seasons Cafe, while Chairman's Bar and Charred Oak Bourbon Bar serve up cocktails and live concerts every week. For those on the go, The Grind is your one-stop coffee shop with gourmet brews and grab-and-go goodies. And of course, we can't forget the Sports Bar and Grill, where you can catch all the Grizzlies action with the best pub fare in town. At Southland Casino Hotel, we've got the perfect dining experience for you, so come on down and ignite your taste buds today. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly for help quitting, call 800-522-4700. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Show special show today, gearing up for day one of the men's NCAA tournament. Chris Burning gonna join us. He's gonna take over. John Roser's gonna be here before we get to them. Just wanted to give a thank you to Will Coleman. Will Coleman, who just cooked up fried chicken cinnamon rolls, pizza egg rolls, buffalo chicken sliders, s'mores cake. What was your inspiration for today's menu, Will? Man, I, you know, CJ is a huge inspiration for a lot of the stuff that I see. Uh, for a lot of the stuff that I, I want to try and make. But today this menu was straight up, you know, just inspired by CJ and, and what he repo. Anytime CJ posts something. Oh my God, he's your muse. Yeah, I try and, I try so and recreate sweet. and try and, you know, create for my guy. Um, but it's a little, you know, cooking for me is just kind of like a slow key, like a love language. Like I, I can count on one hand the amount of people I've cooked for. I don't just be cooking for everybody, man. I just, that's like... That's like my thing. Like if I spend time in the kitchen and you oh, get some for food, goodness, hey, he's, he's acting he's he's like you're a client at Soul Cycle. Shut your I'll fitness, in, <laughs> fitness influencer <laughs> ass up. Right. You, you, you get some cooked food out of me. <laughs> that, I ain't got no more love for you, dog. I love your pieces, man. I just everybody, you know, I just it, it take a lot. Yeah. I just say it's just something I enjoy, man. So well, I, we enjoy it I enjoy as well. I enjoy cooking for y'all. It makes I enjoy cooking better. for my people. I know y'all been rocking with me. You've been rocking with me since I got to Memphis. Man, so, I So it's like, man, you it's feel just out of all love. Nah, man. No? Will you? I'll probably, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get one done today. But I got, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with the masses. I got, I mean, I got, I'm, I'm going to have, as soon as I get it done, it's probably going to be, I mean, same as everybody else. UConn and Houston going to be in there for sure. Hey, right. Final Four. Will Coleman says I've been down with him from the beginning. That is absolutely true. I was there. Yeah, Me and Rose are in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
And I had to stand up for him. And I said, this is a hell of a teammate. I said, because this man just showed up to the game with a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and, and they said he ran into a door. And he said, I ran into now, a door. And, and I will, <laughs> will, look, a lot of people still at, Okay, so I, I, I got time. Do I have Go for it. Okay, so, you know, I guess I, I can spill the beans. Well, you, uh, beans. You, you, you saved a life. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Truly, yeah. you saved a life that day. So we, you know, we 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 having a good time. We 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 cutting up in the hotel, you know, whatever. We <laughs> so water balloons and water was a big thing with that team. We mm -hmm. got the hotels throwing water, throwing water balloons, and everywhere else. So it got to a point where I was like, man, I'm I'm kind of I'm done. Like I'm done. I quit. It's like don't nobody throw no water on me. If somebody else throws some water on me, we fighting. <laughs> And I was, I was really serious. I was, you know, we still, we, everybody's still playing. So that's my boy. I love him. We still talk to this day every now and then. He's super, he's super busy now. He's in the trucking and he got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. But Charles Carmooch. So after I tell what I said, he threw some water on me. So in my mind, I'm like, man, we got a game tomorrow. So I'm on top of him. I'm, I'm choking Carmooch. We, we, we go to blow. We go to fisticuffs. I'm choking him. I'm choking him. like, we don't get off of him. Get off of him. Before then, we're about to play Arizona, uh -huh. Jessica. Yeah, well, uh -huh. and, like, and we, and this, I'm playing weight back then. So I'm every bit of 265, <laughs> almost 270. And, then, you know, I got Antonio Barton on my back. I got Will Barton on my back. I got everybody <laughs> trying to pull me off. Carmooch, like, stop. Well, you going to kill him. You going to kill him. Get off of him. Get off of him. So they, I, I let him go get off of him. And I'm like, all right, man, I'm out. I'm finna leave. Kamuch called my name. Like, Will. I turn around. And he just. <laughs> and he's like, damn. So. And then everybody, then everybody want to stop the fight. I'm like, no, nah, man, I ain't got my eye knocked out my socket. Now nah, let me, let me go. Like, no, nah, big wheel, chill, chill, big wheel, chill. <laughs> and then, you know, we go to, you know, film. We had film that night. Oh my God. We We're in, they're in the layup line. We're standing there. And I said, what the hell happened to oh, Will Coleman? They said, he ran into a door last night. Oh, I said, he ran. That happened. <laughs> that's that's the worst. Yeah, it was nuts. But again, I think that's the, Isn't I think that what that's they said the, about was it Jalen Duren last year or two years ago? Which, which Tigers player ran into a door? Oh, a look, couple years. Anytime back? anybody ever gets I know, into it's a, my favorite thing. Most guys hit, get into a fight and then they say they hit. Oh, that's what it some, was. They yeah, punched the wall. Yeah. Right, Keonis. Yes, Lester punched the window. That's mm -hmm. what it was. Punched yeah. the window. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, Slipped. Oopsie. Yeah, the, the <laughs> window actually had a name, but. Hey, 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 man, y'all, I mean, y'all been doing this for long. Y'all know how to read between the lines, man. But I think the glory about boys, because, you know, and I'm learning this with my daughter, too. Girls mean, man. They go for the juggling and yeah. stuff, you know, that when they want to do whatever they want to do. But boys, they fight and they homies the next day. Man. I it's, actually, it's water girl stuff lingers, boy yeah, stuff gets soft. I have boys, I have a boy and a girl, and girls hurt, like, they have feelings. Yes. Oh, yeah. And their feelings get hurt yeah. in a way that a boy will fight it out like yeah, their yeah, aggression yeah. They'll, they, yes no they yeah. and then they'll be okay yeah that's just what they need to get out mm -hmm. a girl just needs to get away yeah yes. and deal with what has time. taken place and time, time. time. i mean yeah. a, a chick it's just it, it's on everything i didn't you know broke a couple hearts but that's the first thing they i'm like man come on let's fix this one i just need time i just need time, time. you know it's boys like the time what? Like, <laughs> we can fix this right now. Yeah. We can fix it right now. No, I just need time. You know. It's so funny. I think the by. older you get, though, the less you want like conflict to linger. Or at least yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't speak for all women That's out here. That's true. But, God, when I was younger, yeah, I, I need time. I need to go sit and like. Oh. Uh, Drop out emo Facebook statuses and listen to my sad <laughs> playlist. But now as an adult, it's like, okay, can we solve this by the end of the day? Like, this yeah. is an, an I've got e stuff to do e tomorrow. Situation. I have a life to live. Yeah, Thank you. That, that anticipate, or if somebody hits you with the. We got to talk later. Oh, God. The Man, they hit more. you with that. Can like, tell me now or I'm going to throw up everywhere. Can we talk later this week? Yeah, Excuse nah, me? Yeah, nah, We got to get that out the way. Let's How talk right now. You. Hey, so who'd you say you had in the end? So for, for sure, I got UConn and Houston. Okay. Um, I, I hate my bracket already. I have you. Houston Man, I just don't see nobody Nebraska. beating UConn, dog. I just, they, they, they are, are Jeff, they are Jeff, 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 Steph Curry. Yeah. K-State, Tominaga, let's go. I'm with it. I don't Barry. see nobody beating UConn, probably Barry one of the strongest teams in, in, in the NCAA right now. You think? Yeah. They're like 31-3. and three. But it just feels too easy. You Picking UConn feels Who did you have at the end? I have Marquette winning it all. Yeah. So I think it speaks for the Big East. I think we were just talking to Gary about this Tyler Colick kid. Second team All-American. Hasn't played for the last six games. He had this oblique injury. Didn't play in the Big East tournament. But I watched a couple of those Marquette games earlier this year. They're really The Big East is really good. So give me a Marquette team with their best player back. 
Mm. I couldn't find anybody to beat North Carolina. <laughs> she got. A... Can I interest you in Mississippi State? Uh, no, you can, but no I just... one wants it. Jeffrey's going for thirty. Look. Oh, DJ Jeffries, by the way. I just want to root for him. I went and looked up all the old Memphis rosters to see if anybody else was still around. Mm. Because my son mentioned to me that DJ Jeffries was around. Boogie, I think, is the only one. I mean, there's other ones that play at, like, small schools or whatever. Please, for the love of all that is holy, let USC start a new (laughs) new realm. (laughs) Because I went, I went, I saw, I heard your stat. I heard you talking about the 11 seeds. Yeah. Which is... uh, I I had seen that as well, about how the the percentage of them winning. But... um, so there's this trend, and it's every national champion. You've got to be in the top. Uh, let me get it right, because I don't want to get the I don't I I, I don't want to get the number wrong for uh, for this uh, for this stat. It is the top forty in adjusted offense mm-hmm. and the top twenty five in adjusted defense. Okay. Like that's Ken Palm. Uh, if you go to Kempom, every national champion applies to this. There are only there are nine teams that apply to this. So that I knew at the beginning of filling out my bracket, I had to have one of these nine. Unless history gets bucked, which it honestly never does. Right. Arizona, Auburn, UConn, mm-hmm. Creighton, Houston. Tennessee, Purdue, North Carolina, Marquette. Yep. So when I'm going through all those, now I'm just looking at those with those in mind and going, all right, some of them are going to play each other. Was Purdue in there? Yes. Yeah. Some of them are going to play each other. Some of them are obviously going to get, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're going to run into each other and they get knocked out. Right? There's another one. We know that since I believe it's 97, nobody west of the Mississippi has won the title. All right, so now we're kicking out Arizona. They're out. West Coast teams don't win. Out. Sorry, Wait, since Jess. Since when? Out. God, since like 97, off. right? That, that's when Arizona won. <laughs> that's since the, the last, last time. Last year Arizona won. They're yeah. done. Out of so here. I mean, Gonzaga could never have won because never. The anti-West Coast forces that's were working right. against them this that's whole time. Right. Yeah. That's right. Jalen Suggs did everything he could. He, sure he did everything he, sure he could. Tried. Tommy Hawkins did everything he could. I lost. Oh, God, I loved that team. I like taking the play-in team all the way, too. Like the one that we see at the beginning. That's I, what CJ did this year. VCU He did. took Colorado, but then I was like, did you watch that Colorado team I know. last night? You know who I took? Colorado State. I like them. I did, too. Because remember VCU years ago, Shaka yeah. Smart mm-hmm. made that run. Uh, we just had one. Make that run as well. Uh, recent it was it was UCLA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost. Really they lost. Uh, it was uh, Michigan State vomited all over themselves <laughs> at the end of the first four game. I said, "This UCLA team is not good." First round slam, money against them. Lost. Second round, hell no. Nah. I watched them. You know, get lucky against Michigan State. Slam money against them. Lost. Next round. Slam money. I lost all the way to the championship game. And then I lost in overtime. <laughs> that Hami Hawkes team, yeah. stupid Mick Cronin, they cost me a fortune. <laughs> because of the first four game. So I am a believer in the first four game. Okay. Which of the ones do I love? So then I just had Colorado State knocking people out, like right and left. And and their and their coach follows me on Twitter because we drafted uh David, David Roddy. Roddy. Oh. So Nico yeah. Medved. So I'm gonna root for him. I like him. He too. seems like an awesome yeah. dude. And you know, in fact, I think he's the only coach that follows me on Twitter that I would have absolutely no relationship uh-huh. with. So I gotta root for him, kinda. Obviously, I want Creighton to do well. Because that's our old buddy Ryan Miller, Mike Miller's kid, who I saw they not that three long ago. Houston high school kids on that. Is that team. right? Yeah, and Jonathan Lawson's on it. He doesn't play very much. But Jonathan so, Lawson's on that roster. So, I got him in the final four. My son told me this morning, because I was telling him, I was like, man, was like, we're going to have to stay up late so we can root for Bucky Ball against Kansas. The, the kid that got in the fight with Morant is on the same for team. Is he and really? And there's a kid from ECS. 
on the Sanford team. There's two Memphis connections. Josh Holloway? He's on that team. Really? Yeah. No way. I didn't know until yesterday. That's so funny. How about that? <laughs> Somebody texted me, and they're like, you know who's on that Sanford team? I was like, what? Dude, the reason I got Creighton going I was far like, is- thank God they didn't come here. Every freaking <laughs> story in the it. world, every freaking oh, story in the world dang. would be about that crap. Yeah. In fact, we need them to get knocked out. So get them out of here. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need, what if it's a game winner or something? Here I'm we go. Talk about it. We're going to have a Baxter Holmes 6,000 okay. word piece on <laughs> <laughs> the redemption of John Holloway. Stop it. Stop. Can we get the how to check a ball? Uh, I know. He doesn't have to, ch- he doesn't have to check again. in D1 games. Thanks. I tell you this, man. I am. Uh, I have this ominous feeling every time right before this starts. Because I do my bracket. I get it all settled. And then I hate it. I really do. Oh, I don't, I I don't even like that North Carolina team. I want to be I, like you and have them have getting them ousted. I hate but that team. I know, but the other night, other night. I hate Purdue though, but I have Purdue I in my Final Four, and it feels completely. I got Purdue that. winning it all. Oh God, <laughs> dude, we were hey, me, me, we were watching that game last night. We we're like, come on, Grambling, right? Because Grambling just got a bunch of small guys, mm-hmm. yeah. and then Seth Davis is like, you know, I'm not saying he's like, look, don't come back to me if Purdue wins by 50, mm-hmm. but like this team is. Fast and athletic, and they got a bunch of small guys, and, oh, and I'm like, dude, if Grambling beats Purdue, it will be the funniest thing ever. Well, Zach Eady's like seven four, so you can have small guys, but if you literally have nobody to deal with dude, them, I, I can't stand them. Yeah. They, they, I'm they, glad you said that number when you said the nine teams, because I had no idea of that. Who's y'all's low? Who's y'all's, y'all's lowest seed uh, making it in the final four? St. Mary's. Colorado State. I got St. Mary's too, Roser. I think I have Colorado yeah, State. Yeah, I, have two I heard Bennett say this, and it, it is true. Bro, Gary totally yesterday convinced me on St. Mary's. Dude, all between the past two weeks, he's been talking about how he's like picking Grand Canyon to beat him. I'm like, what the yeah. hell is that? Literally been talking about how St. Mary's, like, since Christmas, <laughs> I feel has trained, played, like, bro. one of the top eight teams in the country. I'm going to like, tell you something. It's one of my best friends for over 20 years. He is a fraud. <laughs> he Gary betrayed me. He betrayed me on St. Mary's, dude. Gary is a fraud. <laughs> what did he do? Tell you they've only I, lost I, one game since reason, Christmas. Another reason. Oh yeah, that is, they're back healthy. I don't and, want to pick North Carolina either. I've watched that North. I actually I, have watched North Carolina. Well, look, they got R.J. Davis, right? They got the guard, and then look, it's going to become a running joke during this tournament. Because I know, because when we were watching the other night, <laughs> it sounds like Baycott's still playing. Wrong. I know. Oh, how many of those are to right. yeah. So they do have a 30 year old center. Yeah. Who's yeah. like been relevant for a long time Even and he's good. This kid who plays for Oregon, who used to play for South Carolina, uh, Jermaine Cousinard, uh-huh. played three years at South Carolina and now he's played two years at Oregon. This is his second year at Oregon. But I saw South Carolina fans being like, God, we can't. Can't shake this guy. He was here a hundred years ago. Oh, before the best. The best was two years ago when Miami made their run, and it was oh, God, yeah. Charlie Moore who, oh, yeah. who passed her and recruited here, and, and he, we had he already to, we were already two coaches removed. And then he like went to DePaul and Cal, and, like, <laughs> and then, I think he played for like Conzo Martin at Cal. He <laughs> was like twenty seven. <laughs> <laughs> the Oregon thing, Jesse you brought yeah. up. So we did the research yesterday because Alan Boston was saying he's he was telling us he's like Dana Altman's been, I mean you look he's like if my memory recalls like he's been really really good in the first yes. rounds of the, all seven tournaments he's made at Oregon this is his eighth he has made it through the first round yeah he's so. a good he's a good coach he's a great March coach the team I'd love to see. And I hate this because of the whole Cal Perry thing, but I, I, the Kentucky team is the most fun team for me to watch. Yeah. They're the most yeah. fun because of Dillingham and Shepard. And, yes. and was, yeah. the fact that the Grizzlies have a top five pick more than likely, top yeah. six, seven pick, right? Like there's a real chance that one of those two guys could be on this team next year. Real chance, right? And so that's fun. Definitely. Because this is not a good tournament. I mean, it's not a good draft tournament. No. Right? Even them kids Clinging. from them kids from Colorado last night, you know. I kept waiting. I know. Yeah, I kept, they kept telling Dissell me. was all right, but I mean, he's, he's not a top ten guy. Cody Williams didn't. No, Cody KJ. Had that one block early. KJ there. Simpson, their point guard, is the best yeah. one. Right? He's the best one. But, I mean, I don't know. I, and so, it's not. I, I'm hopeful that some of these guys, you know, for sure, there's always the guys that, like, improve their draft stock dramatically. 
somebody that's not in the top in the lottery right now that will be in the lottery. It's ED season. Because they're stop it. It's a lot of these teams. Can you really say that with your chest? I've gone out of my way to watch all these like lottery guys. I tried to get into the Duke kid for a minute, and I was like, Filipowski. No. Not a fan. Pass. No. No. Slow. I don't want him. It's incredible he came back after. I mean, the guy's probably got his leg amputated I know. during the course. Oh, I know. Right? I couldn't stand that either. But the guy's probably going to end up being like a ten-time NBA All Star because I because <laughs> I hate him. No, <laughs> I don't like him. I don't know why I don't like him. I just don't like the guy. I watch him play and I'm like, God, get this guy out of here. Same way with Edie. I don't like him either. I don't like him. Just big lug. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Who likes he the a... Roser loves the big lugs. Yeah, I'm an Edie fan. Big fan of the lugs. So you I were mean... saying you were saying you're glad I gave that stat? Did you watch Yeah, the... oh, Mr. Odds couple didn't know the most basic no. histo- history about the Final Four? No, I only pay attention to the football stuff. <laughs> well, basketball season, we're I'm doing the show to do the show. Football season, I'll have my research when it comes to football stuff. No, because my final four outside of St. Mary's. <laughs> Is Auburn, Marquette, and Purdue. Roser, shout out. I got Auburn too, bro. So I got three of those teams in there. Three of those nine teams with Purdue beating Auburn. I got Auburn winning the championship. I Purdue I'm viewing as Virginia. It was always the same thing with Virginia. Auburn they could never that. win it. They can never win it. They can never win it. Tony Bennett goes out early because his teams can't score. And then they freaking won the thing. I did kind of feel like what the – did you see the end of the SEC tournament when they interviewed Bruce Pearl? Mm-mm. And he was like sobbing. Oh, and he had lost his father. Yeah. And his mm-hmm. father is his biggest fan. Yeah. Yep. And he just knows what his dad would think yeah. right now. And I was like, oh, my God. I this, is such a DVD. Bra- this is such I a DVD. I know. Enough, I always say, like, uh-huh. you know, that Sports Illustrated, yep. like, you know, relive this. <laughs> you know, the, yep. the, the, what, they don't even do those anymore, right? Because nobody has DVDs. But they do, like, the history of the season type thing. And it just felt like one of those, like, we're going to – I can see – you know, sometimes you think about this through the prism of, like, the way entertainment goes, and it's like, can't you see the CBS vignette about Bruce Pearl and his Let's dad? Let's go. Yes. Right? War Eagle. Easy. Yes. Been by his side his whole, all his years and all this stuff. And, like – and usually I think the SEC is – they pretty much always put somebody there towards the end. Mm-hmm. Right? We usually look up and go, eh, the SEC was better than we thought they were. Every Except for year. stupid Rick Barnes. <laughs> All right. But maybe this is the year. Look, I know. Well, Tennessee fans are hopeful that you look, the great storyline. Can Dalton Connect defeat Rick Barnes? Because <laughs> they do finally have a guy who can just take over a game and score. He's certainly the best since Lofton. Yeah. Because Grant Chris Williams, Lofton was unbelievable. No, Chris Lofton was. Shoot. Schofield was really good. Mm-hmm. But not like this. Not Him like and Grant this, no. were not like this guy. No, because no, Grant was a big man. This Grant guy was could go for 40. Man. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's ball in his hands. Get right. it done. You know, they, um, who do you have? Who do you have Rick Barnes losing to? I Texas? have Rick Barnes losing to, no, I haven't passed Texas. Losing to Creighton. Creighton, the Sweet 16. What about you? Purdue in the Elite Eight. Uh, I got him losing to Texas. Oh, God. I got him losing to Texas also. My final four. What does it look like? I got Colorado State beating them. Colorado That's State? Disgusting. In the final four? <laughs> no, beating Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and I do and have him going to the final four. four. Turn up, Colorado turn up. State. Yeah, you guys have uh, the Colorado, Colorado State. I'm a Rams right guy. Going I on got here. Colorado in the final four. Yeah. I got Colorado. Bro, they held, they held Virginia to 14 at halftime. Even Virginia, if Virginia held themselves. Bro, to even if they, <laughs> even if Virginia sucks, fourteen is anemic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My final four: UConn, Baylor, Colorado, Creighton, and I'm out. Y'all got it. I got huddle to do, baby. Okay, okay. All right, let me drop mine real quick: I'll Auburn, St. Mary's, Houston, Creighton in the final four. Auburn, your national champion. I've got Car- UConn, Arizona, Marquette, Purdue, with Marquette as the champion. Got Carolina. Who did I just yeah, put you down? hate it. And you I hate, hate that you this. hate the North Carolina pick. Ugh. Maybe. I got Carolina, Marquette, Colorado State. <laughs> Go Rams. And uh who was in the bottom pod? Not Bama. You had North Carolina. Oh, Carolina, yeah. And then I've got Carolina and Auburn, I think. And then Carolina. And then 
whoever Marquette. I think I get Carolina Marquette final game oh, and then the Carolina. Wow. I saw you somebody really know your final four. Ca- I yeah. just did it. <laughs> I literally just. Okay, who's in everyone's women's final four? USC, South Carolina, Caitlin Clark, South Iowa, Carolina, Iowa, yeah, yeah. and Stanford, UConn, yeah. and no. Maryland. Hang on, I no, got you it. did Maryland. I think I have Maryland. You filled it out? Yeah. I filled you filled out a women's bracket? Yeah. I'm so proud of oh, you. No, 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 no. I didn't fill out the bracket. We had to pick the final four. <laughs> Bar- Darnell had oh. us pick the final four. Yeah, so I South Carolina, that. Texas, yeah. Iowa, UConn. Yeah, and I have uh, I have South Carolina beating Caitlin Clark in Iowa. I have. They're beating Caitlin Clark. Really. USC beating Iowa in the – And then having a USC. The real USC versus – CJ, a you fake USC. gotta get that cake out of my face. Oh, no, the cake put is it right in his face. It's good stuff. I'm Take going a bite to eat of that so cake. Good. Take a bite of that s'mores cake. It'll change your life. If there's yeah, a fork honestly, in front of me, there's graham cracker in it. There's like a marshmallow filling in it. Jeez. I need it out. Do you so, bet? No. I do for March Madness. Oh, I fill it. out a couple brackets. For money. I know. And then I, uh, you know, I'm just out here trying to make players like Tyrese Halliburton feel Does your husband bet? We're not Where, oh, Where are you watching the games today? In the chicken coop? No, I think we're going to watch the Hooters, actually, okay? Hey, get a Rosa. Get a Rosa. What are you watching? Is that what y'all call your house? The chicken coop? Oh, <laughs> we do do a big square. Me and Rosa are both going to be complaining yeah, gonna the entire day. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's the fun of Mark Madness. I into it because, okay, so when I was a kid, you have to understand how much of this was like drilled into me early on. Back then, like, betting was such I a understand. no-no, and living in a household with somebody who was an NCAA That's employee right. and a member totally of the men's fair. basketball committee, like we could fill out brackets, and we weren't even really supposed to talk about filling out the and bracket then for you, free. And then you wake up one day and find out the best baseball player in the world. Exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> How are we not talking insane. about that? <laughs> insane. Insane. <laughs> I did not do enough research, like reading on that story. So what, like his. Basically, his guys. Bro, they ain't looking good, Rosa. Shoei Sho- Sho- Otani had spent. Uh, they they had yes. spent all manner of dollars with this illegal bookie. So this is the way it always goes, right? The steroid guy gets busted. They go in and they find all his documents and they uh-huh. say, "Oh my God, look at all these guys that did steroids!" Right? They're not looking for the people that end up catching the shrapnel that were involved. They're looking to bring down the illegal bookmaker. Right. So they got the illegal bookmaker and then there's all these wire transfers from literally Shohei Otani. <laughs> To this illegal bookmaker. Millions and millions of dollars. They, then they get all this report. They find out about it. They go to the translator. This is his best friend, the translator. And he says, hey. Uh, they say, hey, and your name's a part of this as well. He says, no, 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 no. Show he had nothing to do with this. I know all the rules. We never bet on baseball. We bet on football, we bet on college basketball, we bet, you know, I did. I bet on all this. I got way over my head. I'm down big. Millions of dollars. Yeah. I, owe I this saw guy. that quote. I saw and that so quote. now, Shohei is paying that debt for me, right? So then they come back and they say, hold on now. He didn't mean any of that. Because the lawyers okay. for Otani, he talks to ESPN before Otani and them ever even know about all oh, this. Oh, God. And the guy was just like, he's keeping it real. He's know, just telling them. Otani's the- camp set up that interview for the translator in ESPN. So Otani's camp knew. They've just changed the discourse of it because then. Because they got that, lawyers. Right. So because that, then so they, it's a difference between camp and lawyers. Like, it's correct. like lawyers come in, they're like, wait, 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 that story's not true. So then they say, so then they say, no, 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 no. This guy stole that money. This guy stole that money. He, Otani didn't even know Massive that he back. was head over heels, you know, in debt, gambling wise. He took that money, and so now this is a story about a friend, you know, betraying a friend or whatever. Right. And then the guy, the translator, he gets fired from his job with the Dodgers, and he says, "Look, he didn't have nothing to do with this. He didn't even know what I was doing. I'll take whatever penalty you want me to take." Right? And so Kevin Clark actually had the best of all the tweets about that. He's like, "Look." I've read all this story. Either the translator is the best friend you could ever have or Shohei Otani is the best friend you could ever have. Because one of them is just paying down another Mm -hmm. guy's gambling debt. 
because he's your boy. Right. But I can't be involved in that. So now the other guy's just going to take all I'll the I'll take the fall right. for you because right. you're the mega star. And, I'll take the fall for you. And let's be honest. They're probably both betting on games. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. So what? Who cares? Well, it's illegal in no, you can California. California. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Don't let the hippies win. <laughs> California, just my God, dude, that's a weird deal too. My best friend lives in California, and like they had the vote a couple months ago, and I mean, dude, it wasn't even close. Yeah. It was like thirty percent voted yeah. to legalize it. No, they want they want to yeah. legalize heroin, but they don't want to legalize right. gambling. Hey, and here's and here's the other thing, the there's even like a bunch of people got tied up in this. Even the guy that owns MGM mm-hmm. got tied up in this because he was letting he knew the guy ran a book. You know, they found through mm-hmm. all this, right, right? Right, And he was letting him come gamble at the MGM. Uh, so he's in trouble for letting the guy gamble money that he knew he was getting from his. Right. It's also, mm-hmm. it, look, this is the truth. How many times do you hear about illegal gambling rings being shut down for all these years that we've been doing this show? Not very many. No, it's very As soon true. as this thing became regulated, now they're going to go try to find everybody yep. that has got a book. Every bookmaker yep. that's out there has to be worried now because they're looking into all these guys. Because those guys, that's how they everybody, nobody even cared. And that's how, they, they, that guy's probably been running a, I guarantee you, that guy's been running a sports book for 30 years. Yeah. Nobody cared until, but then DraftKings is lobbying. All, all, everybody's lobbying. They're saying, hold on, no, no, no. There'd be so much more money coming into our legal books and it's taxed and it's like on the record and, you know, you got all the forms and all this stuff. And so now they're going to try to, you know, they got task force. They're yeah. trying to break up these, you know, bookmakers yeah. all over yeah. the place. And we can have the NBA put on League Pass that, hey, bet live now because right. here are the live That's odds crazy. on games. And yeah. Did you see the Bickerstaff stuff? Yeah. It said oh. his like family's been threatened because of yeah, gambling. Yeah, somebody and stuff. came and like made threats to him and he took it to it's the insanity. NBA. It's yeah. insane. There's, there's going to be a whole generation of kids that grow up and they're only going to know gambling on these games because, like, the, when they watch TV, yeah. that's everything is going to be about gambling. And there's also going to be ones that don't live in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm hey, guilty hey, with your what, son, hey, too, because dude, I've been over there bro, on college football bro. Saturdays and we're just talking about it the whole time. Imagine William wondering why his dad's pumping his fist when Colorado went up five. <laughs> I'm Weird. like, hell yeah, KJ. He's like, have you ever even? I'm like, no, I've never watched him. He's no. like, well, why do you care? I was like, I picked him no. in my bracket. <laughs> the, 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 the worst was, the worst was when I was over there. We were both watching the Southern Miss Liberty football game. There's like five people in the crowd. There was like a weather delay, so it's like 10:30 at uh, night, and we're like, yeah. I still, William's like. What in the world? Bro, I still hate Frank Gore's yeah. kid. There you go. <laughs> because <laughs> of that game. Killed him. Killed him. <laughs> killed him. With the overtime. Yeah, and it went to overtime. And, the, the, the two and I got excited happened. because we had it. I was like, we got a chance in overtime to cover. And then <laughs> they scored a two-point conversion, and then the game was over. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell? And they're like, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Once it goes to do whatever, With the second they, just start doing, just two they just start doing alternating two-point conversions. Right. And I think we had a minus three. I'm like, this is the it worst, you win, worst, worst rule ever. ever. It helped you win, though, on uh, Frank Harris against Houston. Mm-hmm. No, we don't two, talk though. about him. We're not talking about him anymore. Frank Harris. We're going to let you get Diego out of here. Diego Pavia. Yeah, because we've got to have Alan Boston come on. Oh, yeah, Alan Boston. You know what? You guys have a great time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Go ahead to the chicken <laughs> coop. <laughs> you are not living unless you're doing a teaser, an uh, alt line teaser in this in these games. You know what? Today, and I hey, am. you know what I should do? I should do the Jessica Benson money line parlay with the uh, <laughs> with the eleven seeds. You should. There you go. Or maybe do we just round robin it. Do it in my And that honor. way, if it hits two of them. What are those 11s? Uh, that probably, or just points. New Mexico, probably. Oregon, NC State, and Duquesne. I wonder if you did a round robin with the 12s and the 11s. That's eight games if you did a round robin three by eight. You got to so, hit three of them. I will tell you. Oh, I like that. Here, you ready for statistics on this, Rosa? I like that, too. I wish I really one like of us that. was so good at math. I, we need, like, uh, one of those beautiful mind guys that could do the odds for us offhand. But uh, 11 seeds over six seeds. <laughs> Has happened 58 times, 38%. And 12 seeds over 5 seeds, 
53 times, 35%. So we got 38% and 35%. She's a little over mm-hmm. one in three chance yep. on those happening. I Not like do the these. extra odds. I don't know. Do but it. I don't like NC State. And I freaking. Oh, I love that big dude. I for bet NC Gonzaga. State. Oh, the Zebo guy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves that guy. All right. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll get uh, Alan Boss on here. We're going to go through all the Friday games. Thanks, Jess. Thanks. Back into this. Chris Vernon. Show. Oh, no. This is the Mega Pot. What is the it? The Mega Show. <laughs> the Mega <laughs> Show. Mega Madness. The Mega Madness. <laughs> Throwdown. In the M Town. There's no substitute for experience, the knowledge gained from having been there before, and the passion to share what you know to make everyone around you better. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open the Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power On Board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. There's no substitute for experience, the knowledge gained from having been there before, and the passion to share what you know to make everyone around you better. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open the Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com slash students. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. Hi, we're back. It's the uh, Mega Madness Show. You see the huge March Madness set up outside when i was pulling into the garage this morning the i could tell the garage people were like all stressed out and i was like what are you stressed out for yeah. I was like, what's going on and i was like ain't nothing going on down here they're like yes it is i was like what and they're like it's the open practices open practices so for me- the teams media availabilities okay yeah everybody's here to see the japanese steph curry and colgate and Colgate. Shout yeah. out. Oh, Colgate. yeah. Forgot about them. Shout out Colgate. All right. And yeah. Longwood. Longwood. That's right. Alan Boston is our favorite college basketball wise guy. <laughs> Been joining us for years. Another winner last night with Colorado and Grambling. 
He had both those games pegged last night. You can read about him in the book The Odds by Chad Millman. You can see him on the documentary The Best of It about uh, gambling. Uh, Alan Boston, longtime college basketball wise guy, joins us now. What's up, buddy? You feel all right? Yeah, I'm awake. Good picks last night. March Madness time. You're supposed to say thank you. Thank you. Without <laughs> <laughs> my manners. Come on, Alan. All right. Let's start. We said we're going to do all the Friday games. We did all the Thursday games yesterday. For anybody that missed those, you can go find those on YouTube. Yesterday's show, the Chris Varney show, Alan Boston, we ran through the entire first round for all the games that are going to be going on today. So these are the games for tomorrow. All right, we'll start with... Look at that sweater. Wow, look at you all dressed up there. All dre- What's going uh, on? You like that cardigan? It's, it's uh, interesting. It's cold. it's cold in here. Shut up. All right. Uh, I like it. I was <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like it. Let's start. Tomorrow morning, first game, Florida Atlantic versus Florida Atlantic versus Northwestern. Tomorrow morning, eight versus nine, Florida Atlantic's laying two and a half. Yeah, uh, I, I would say uh, I laid one and a half uh, big with Florida Atlantic and probably would lean to laying two and a half for something, too. Mm. In all, in all, in all their so-called disappointment, this is the same team that made the Final Four last year, and the same team that earlier in the year uh, beat Arizona on a neutral court, which is no joke, and and legitimately did it. It was no not because Arizona played poorly; it was a a, a well played game by both that Florida Atlantic happened to win. Uh, I think they struggled as the favorite all year in the in conference, and definitely. You know, where they call it the hunter and the hunted, that cliche kind of thing. But I think in this instance, it, it mattered. Uh, I think they'll be back to that Final Four team they were last year. They're playing a team that, in my opinion, doesn't belong in the tournament. A team that's starting center has missed the last few games. Nicholson, I don't think he's going to be 100%. And if he's not 100%, Northwestern seems like they really have no way to to handle Florida Atlantic. Uh, uh. uh stuff and uh I, I i think the coaching edge is pretty big for florida atlantic too and uh props for Co- collins northwestern had a, an overachieving year but again overachievers tend to crash out in the tournament and this is one beaten down team they already lost ty berry for the year and if this if, if nicholson ain't 100 percent, then they're they're going down and maybe going down big All unfortunately right. they stuck florida atlantic in the eight seed bracket the the committee decided that they weren't going to make the final four this year but uh-huh. They may have a little surprise for Connecticut in the next round, so I think they're one of the few teams that maybe can deal with Connecticut. Wow! See, we weren't, we, you know, that. being in Memphis's conference and Memphis beating them, we weren't very high on Florida Atlantic. Plus, that dud they threw up against Temple when we saw them in the conference tournament. It again, I think, I think the dynamic they were playing with this year was much more difficult. They were the uh, Cinderella darling, the underdog every game last year, and and. The underdog automatically has some psychological edge. They, they, right? You're, you're. Yeah. It's just human. Uh, but they're back in that kind of role as, as not the favorite anymore. You know, maybe they are the favorite this game, but I, I just feel like they'll get to that high level that they're certainly capable of. All right. Uh, and Next. If, if that's the case, they lay over Northwestern. So All right. You like FAU? And again, the, the coach is so good, and they run such good stuff, and he makes such good adjustments during the game that they could beat anybody, including Connecticut, who who clearly is the best team in the country. But got gotcha. you know, it happens. Baylor is playing Colgate. I'm actually going to be at this game tomorrow, Alan. I'm going to Baylor Colgate. What am I going to see? Where's the game at? It's in Memphis. It's right. It's literally oh. outside my window. I mean, <laughs> they're not playing out like literally outside the window, but I mean, it's. In the building outside yeah, oh, of the window. Court, so it's a it's a, uh, it's a hundred yards from where I'm sitting right now. So I oh, will excellent. I will walk over there tomorrow to watch those games. Oh, that's but, Memphis's home court, right? That's it. That's it right there. Never been. My buddy, uh, my buddy and his uh, spouse equivalent moved to Memphis, so I might be visiting. You got to. You, you got to. Me, you guys owe me corkies, right? That's the Mount Barbecue place. Hunt, wherever. We'll take you to any any manor. We'll take you oh, right. You, you got to find a good one. Yeah, we'll find you all kinds. We have uh, no good barbecue here in the Northeast. We're kind of like. I know. I know. Yeah, we're seafood, not any seafood. You don't need any barbecue. You got to keep them triceps good, Alan. 
Oh. We're all you fat. Eat, we're all, eat meat, even though I really don't eat meat too we're, often. We're but, all fat. We're all fat down here. <laughs> yeah, that, that. No, I, I've killed it in the gym. Like that's that's uh, one place. Where I, I have succeeded there. That's for sure. All right. So uh, ba- Baylor's so fourteen. Baylor, Colgate, four, yeah. Uh, it's a this big is line. Not a, great, not a great Colgate team, but shoot. That being said, uh, not your uh, you know one seed Baylor team either. Uh, Baylor's definitely. A very beatable bunch this year. I'm just not so sure Colgate's the team to do it. Uh, Matt Langle is absolutely brilliant. I can't believe no one's hired him. I, I thought St. John's would try to get him, and but they had a chance to get uh, Slick Rick there. And hearing him whine about not getting in is really worth every bit of them getting screwed over. So, uh, but back to Langle and Colgate. They've uh, given team fits in the past. Tennessee years ago. Uh, with a 20-point dog and took them pretty much to the wire. Then they ran out to that huge lead against Arkansas, and then Musselman, out of desperation, went to a press, and that worked. Uh, so sometimes the athleticism, the athletic gap between Colgate and teams is too much for them to overcome, but Langle can overcome a lot, and I'd be uh, taking the points for something here just because of uh, he, he's just so good, even though this isn't good. This is not a good uh, – version of Colgate, but not a good version of Colgate with Matt Langle. It's still good enough to take 14 with, so I'm plus 14 small. All right. Uh, UAB, San Diego State. Uh, San Diego State, seven and a half. It went up to seven and a half. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this is one of my bigger bets of the tournament. Having watched UAB uh, late in the year, they definitely came on and were didn't put a foot wrong anywhere. Like They were immense virtually in every game uh kennedy a bob huggins guy so he knows what he's doing they they're probably a a difficult prep too they 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 throw a lot at you and uh, have a lot in the arsenal they're a deep team uh i I like what i saw out of them this is not a great san diego state team they're extremely vulnerable they tend to play low games so the points could really be at a premium here and uh Seven and a half is just a mountain of a number. I don't think it should be any more than four and a half, which is what I made it. But I, I even think UAB might be better than my rating. I just there's kind of a ceiling to how good they could be given the talent they have. But maybe they've broken through that, and maybe even four is my line. So this is a, a very good bet. Oh wow! All right, a very Lo- good bet with a very good chance at an upset. All right, loves UAB. San Diego State made the finals last year, but they were dead and buried in the first round last year against College of Charleston, and that was a better better team last year than they have this year. So. Uh, don't get me wrong. They won in Gonzaga. They're not. They're not some. They're not some stiffs. But they're not some uh, great team that's just going to uh, overwhelm uh, uh, UAB. That, that's not happening. This is a very close game. Seven. And seven. Scoring, and, so the points are really, are yeah. really, a, yes. really good. Bet. Seven and a half. We might be able to get a good money line. Plus two thirty on the money line. Damn. All right. Yeah. No. This Bill games. This game feels very even to me. If they do pull the upset, plus two thirty, a hell of a value, that's for sure. They got um, that monster. Uh, they got that monster interior guy. I don't know if he can uh, it's take. I, I'm not a matchups guy, but that Ladie is uh, pretty special for San Diego State. But but Kennedy knows what he's doing. They'll figure it out. All right, loves UAB. Uh, Mark- yeah, yeah, I, really, I like that one a lot. That's a strong bet. I'd be surprised if that didn't win. Marquette is fourteen and a half against Western Kentucky. So Steve Lutz really. Great job once again. He's got roots in uh, Greg McDermott, so he knows what he's doing. But he turned Corpus Christi's uh, program around, and and Western Kentucky made a very good hire. Uh, clearly, uh, I think you guys ended up with Stansbury, right? So, uh, <laughs> their loss is your gain. <laughs> not quite. Uh, anyway, no, the team got better as they went through the year. They're not a great team, but, but once La Tech lost, that was the cream of the crop in that conference. Uh, it was wide open. Western Kentucky ran roughshod through that tournament. Really impressive. Great job by Lutz. Not sure about Marquette with Kolick really maybe not even 100% yet. Uh, and uh, very, very strong team Marquette, but not strong enough to lay 14 to Western Kentucky. So uh, small bet on the underdog there. All right. that's uh, you, you don't love that, though, by any means. Small bet on the underdog. Uh you can't. I, don't, I don't love it, no. But yeah. I mean, again, if if, if you got to do kid, it, if the kid ain't if the kid ain't 100 percent for Marquette, it's it's going to be uh, probably a tough game for them. He's Con- clearly worth a lot. Connecticut is 26 and a half against Stetson. Yeah, good luck beating that team. Like this team is clearly better than last year's team. It's not even close. Like 
Power rating wise is probably a point or two, but but Oof. just visually, their offense is way way better. They have they space the floor better. Their offense flows better. They have more shooters. They're 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 going to be very very hard to beat. They are in the most difficult bracket. Like their bracket is a joke. There's one good team after another in there, uh, and and it's really unfortunate that they didn't uh, even out these brackets a little bit. There's probably it- seven or eight teams that can make a run in that bracket. Is Stetson awful? Connecticut's is, there. Is Stetson awful? Uh, they're an Atlantic Sun team. They, there's the limit how good they could be, and they're not even the best team in the conference. So, okay. Yeah, they're, they're not very good, but. All right. So there's no chance uh, you would take 20. It used to be a baseball school. There's, there's no chance you would take 26 and a half, though. The line's probably too high, but Hurley is a lunatic. Like he just he <laughs> basically says, "I try to win every game by as much as we can." Even though there's, there's the right strategy is to to pull all the starters, the scrubs in, right? You're playing a game on Saturday. You're playing Florida Atlantic on Saturday. It was a really hard prep. Like I'd want my players rested and ready for what you're going to see there. They run such good offense. You better be ready to defend, which Connecticut always is. But you know, running up a score does you nothing in the in the first round. So I got you. Right strategy would be to to chill but right. that's not really his demeanor so i'd always be leery of taking points against connecticut next game is another game that i will be at uh because it's the other one that's hosted here clemson versus new mexico and the 11 seed is favored over the six seed it's new mexico two and a half yeah i think i i, I bet clemson plus three it's it's uh the, the, it's 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 a uh, uh Tricky team to evaluate. Earlier in the year, they went to Alabama and they won. And and uh, when Memphis was playing well, they played them tough at Memphis. And they had another uh, really strong win. I think uh, they they buried TCU on a on a neutral court. They were very very good to start the year, and they had flashes during the year of 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 being very very good too. Uh, typically. Clemson has been the better program than New Mexico. This is a very strong New Mexico team, though. And early in the year, it looked like they were going to be a top-10 team running roughshod over everybody. Uh, I, I've watched New Mexico play, and and they occasionally start chucking up some uh, shots that are ill-advised. Brownell is terrific at Clemson, and uh, it's still ACC versus Mountain West. And I did make New Mexico a one-point favorite, but it kind of feels like uh, a very – pick type game, and I would definitely be leaning strongly towards Clemson. I prefer Brownell to, to Patino's kid, and their, their A game won in Alabama. If they play their A game, it's probably good enough to beat this team. All right, so you would take – you would. You, you, yeah, I'm on Clemson. It just kind of feels right. Like uh, that's that's My gut's tell me to bet it, and that's kind of what it's saying. I think just program to program, they tend towards better. Like that golf analogy, they tend towards yeah. scratch golfer, and New Mexico tends towards a, a three handicap. So, uh, you'd want the scratch golfer over the three handicap. Understood. Uh, Auburn. Hopefully, is... I, I hope that makes sense. I don't know how else to explain it. You always know more about the Ivies than anybody else in the world. Yeah, so great. I'm yeah. sure you, I'm sure you have an opinion on Yale. You got any chance to keep it close with Auburn? Auburn's twelve well, Auburn and a half. Auburn seed, so all right, automatically, I'm not happy that the. Uh, the misseeded, the, one of the more misseeded teams gets to play the Ivy. Uh, uh, yeah, James Jones always has a chance. Uh, they, they were run out by Purdue, I think, last time they were in here. And Auburn, athletically, is just uh, freakish and has been very, very good as a favorite. However, all their good games have been home, at home. And all their wins have not aged well. Their wins against uh, USC and uh, Virginia Tech, both teams had miserable years. I think there was another one in there, too, that they, they uh, that the win wasn't very good. So they, they've they been impressive, and, and but they've all been home games or, or flawed wins. All, all their road games have not been great. And uh, I, I, I'm not a big Bruce Pearl fan, but his teams always do well. Uh, and and uh, I would be leaning toward jail just because of the, the big coaching edge, which some people would disagree on. But James Jones is about as good as it gets. So, And this is a good version of Yale. Very good. It is? Yes, very good. Was I- they may not have seemed it when they played Brown, and Brown pissed the game away. But a lot of teams pissed the game away in the last five seconds. The last five seconds of some of these conference tournament games were just uh, 
nuts how bad the coaching was. Like, what, what are these guys doing? Colorado, I, who we just saw last night, in fact, is playing against Florida. I don't see a line on this. What's the line on this game? Florida's one. Oh, okay. Maybe I think mine has it as a pick. Anyways, all right. Florida minus one against Colorado. What do you think? Yeah, I took Colorado plus one and a half. Okay. I don't love it. I mean, that, that Cody Williams was not very useful last night. They only used like six guys, basically. And that could catch them traveling uh, and, and using a limited roster. But I, I was impressed with both teams last night. That was a very high-level game. And uh, Florida lost their starting center in the conference tournament. And they – I don't – I'm not an X and O's guys, but I don't really see a backup that's viable there. And, uh, yeah, the coach is terrific down there. But but it's, it's, it's not a great team. And without a rim protector – you're usually in, uh, in in worlds of trouble, and, and uh, I think Colorado will know how to exploit that weakness. Uh, they seem to be uh, very good about getting to the basket last night. And, and uh, I love the point guard, the po- KJ uh, KJ Simpson. Simpson. Oh my God, he's yeah. tough. He's tough as nails. And whoever the big monster is, forty four. He had like the crazy putback, like where he just caught it with one hand and then put it. In. He's bigger than everybody. But yeah, and they have no. They, I don't think Florida really is anyone to guard him now. They might. Like again, I'm not. A, you know, I know the teams. I don't know the players. And yeah. So I, I really can't give you some. Uh, you know, some of these other kids who who are, are basketball junkies would know better. But you took. I'm, fo- just try, I'm trying to pick winners. I'm not trying to uh, be a scout. So you took. You fo- know, I could throw some comments in once in a while, but to me, I, I knocked Florida a lot for this kid being uh, out, and uh, I think that's the tipping point. Is uh, the lack of a rim protector could get him here. Also, huh? Colorado was very good. Is that like they were very impressive last night? I thought they they ran terrific offense, and it was it was a very high level game. That that I was very very impressed with Colorado, so I, I took him against Florida. All right. Another game I'm going to be at uh, that's in Memphis is tomorrow afternoon, Nebraska and A&M. Nebraska is laying one and a half. Yeah, I made a big bet on a and I think I took three, but oh. I, I, I think they should be favored. I, I don't think Nebraska should be in the tournament. Outside of a game at Kansas State, they, they won all their home games too. Another team that really uh, could be kind of flawed. They, they're, they're, not, they're not a great team. It's not that they're flawed. They're just not a great team. And most people love this coach. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Uh no, everybody loves uh, J- so every, sure. everybody they, they, loves Japanese Steph Curry. That's who oh they yeah, love. of course. That's probably why they're in the tournament. Like this team isn't very good. That's that's a reality. They 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 uh, they caught a, like a, a a beaten up Duquesne team, and Duquesne kind of took them to the wire at Nebraska. That's probably a better indicator of who they are. Other than that, they they beat up on some bad Big Ten. Big Ten sucked this year. Uh, yeah, they beat Purdue at home, but again, a lot of teams fell on the road this year. It was very. Uh, I think the NIL money has made it more NBA-ish where teams tend to take nights off a little bit. Mm. And uh, home courts were much bigger this year for what, for some reason. Uh, but the uh, I, I'm not a big Nebraska fan, and I'm not a big A&M fan either, but, but program to program, again, if you go to that golf analogy, they're just better. And I don't think anything's changed. I think they're, they're a better program, and I think this team is better than Nebraska, and that's the bottom line. If you're better, you're taking points with them, and I am. I made a big bet here. All right. There's a big bet on a and uh, Duke is 11 and a half against Vermont. Yeah, one second. got to turn this thing down a little bit. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah. Alan, right. Thinks, Al, Alan thinks it's going to end soon for our Japanese Steph Curry guy. <laughs> that was the one saving grace if they were able to. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I, 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 I don't understand the line, honestly. A and M, A and M, A and M was kind of hit or miss this year, but they were very much hit at the, during the uh, a- SEC tournament. I tell you this: if you're right, A and M Houston is a hell of a matchup in the second round. Like, you know what I mean? Like that would be. So the, yeah, we'll talk about Houston in a minute, but. Yep. I'm just not sold on Nebraska. Like I said, outside of that win at K State, which was impressive. I mean, uh, they uh, again, this is all a memory. I think I, I think I remember everything uh, about the, most of these teams. But but Creighton went in there and ran them out of the gym. That's that's that might be more indicative of who they are. I don't think this is a great Nebraska team. I don't I don't. They played well at times, but mostly in spots where they figured to play well. Outside of that Kansas State game, they they. I, I I give them, I don't I don't I don't think they really have much of a chance to be an A&M honestly. Duke, so there you go. I Duke, really don't. I'm not I'm not on a big A&M fan. I watch them play. It, it, it's cringeworthy. The offense they run is like just go uh, 
throw it up and go get the rebound, which is kind of Buzz Williams' uh, thing. Buzz Williams is great. He's like uh, a philosopher. If you listen to his press conferences, he gets into all this uh, esoteric uh, talk. It's awesome. Uh, but anyway, that's that's for after they beat Nebraska. So, yeah. Duke anyway, is – A&M money line should work. Duke is not a, big, a huge favorite against Vermont. I think it's 11 and a half. Well, it's Vermont. Uh, it's Sean Becker. The guy's fantastic. He's uh, the program is is really strong. Again, this is not. It's almost a, a parallel to Colgate. It's not a great version of a team that that's typically very good. They've played to a decent rating. They've had moments where they uh, have played well during the year, but it doesn't seem to be the the typical Vermont team that that you'd worry about in the, in the first round of an NCAA tournament. However, Duke has been very uh, bipolar for lack of a better word, hit or miss is a better way to say it, but I don't want to offend anyone with bipolar illness. Right, you can't say anything nowadays without offending somebody, but anyway, screw them all anyway. That's called being human. We're going to make mistakes with what we say. Uh, I had to throw that in. I couldn't help myself. When I watched Duke, Duke, when when I watched Duke, I didn't think they had athletes. Vermont? No, I didn't think Duke had athletes. When I watched them play against Carolina, I was like, man, this team is not athletic. That was just my opinion. I don't know. You you know more than I. I I uh, I, I have a hard time watching him play. I, oh, I, I, Duke, Duke, I, Duke, Duke I, Carolina I, Duke Carolina was unwatchable. Truly, yeah, I don't. I, I I really thought Shia would be a great coach, but uh, it it doesn't seem to be the case so far. Well, the I, same day, the same day I had watched earlier in the day. That was a great college basketball day. Earlier in the day, I'd watched Tennessee Kentucky, and that game was amazing to watch. Like Shepard was making every shot, dealing like that team. Those teams were fun to watch, and they and they were like flying up and down the court, running a bunch of stuff. And then like Duke Carolina was awful. It wasn't. It, it was worse than any game I watched that day. I was like this Tennessee is... running good offense. That's does, that doesn't sound right. Well, they <laughs> got that. They got that one unbelievable. Yeah, they, they got that yeah, one connect. unbelievable guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that covers up a lot of stuff. He may be able to over overcome Rick Barnes. He's so good. Yeah, he's some story, isn't he? I think he was like a JUCO. Uh, yeah, he's great. Colorado. He was good at Northern Colorado, but uh, he's. Uh, All right, back to Vermont. Do do anyway, back to Vermont. The line, the line is bang on. I don't know. Okay. I don't give anyone an edge, so I'm just yeah, just right. skip it. And, All right. uh, we ain't taking them. Okay. Just root, for, just root for Vermont, I guess. Like that's you always root for the underdog. All right, can we talk ourselves into grambling? Scaring the hell out of Purdue in the first round. We we won with ga- Grambling last night. You picked them. Now they're catching 26 and a half against Purdue. Yeah, what the hell happened there? I gave that game up. I was watching it. Like, how could I be so wrong about this game? Like, it, was, uh, it was ugly to watch. And, and like Montana State got what they wanted every time down the floor. It just didn't look like Grambling had any prayer. And then I looked up and, and the game's in overtime. Like, what? That was a pleasant surprise. Grambling had one guy they could not stop. He's just getting to the basket anytime he wanted to get to the basket. It was great. Lefty. Yeah, how did, left, how did, the, you mean, oh, Montana State had someone. No, 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 no. Grambling, the lefty wing. He just kept going to the basket, kept going. Okay, I okay. Mean, so Montana could, State couldn't stop. No, nah, they couldn't stop him. And he and then they started turning him over. And then, uh, it, yeah, it got crazy. But it was, I mean, look, I, it was fun to watch. I think both teams probably sucked, but it was pretty fun at the end. Well, that was good. Hmm. Uh, again, the Purdue, but I, you know, with Purdue's uh, history, they may be looking to uh, bury somebody in the first round, so I, I would definitely stay away. Okay. It's it's priced too high, but barely, and who cares? It's it's random. At one point, you had told us that you did like that Charleston team, and they're catching nine and a half against Bama, who has got this super potent offense. What are we thinking? I'm thinking I have Charleston plus 11 and a half, and then I even have some plus 10 and a half. Oh, and I don't know if I'd recommend taking nine and a half for a lot, but I, why not? Like this is a team that 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 should have beaten San Diego State last year. They pissed the game away. This is not uh, some great Alabama team. They they're they're built on a lot of uh, mid major talent, right? The kid from uh, Hofstra and the kid from right cell from uh, Cal State Fort, and I think they got another guy uh, from maybe the Big Sky Conference or the, or the Summit. I don't know. Again, I'm not good with players. But this isn't a so bunch of five, a the five stars, right? It's, it's not a team laden with five-star recruits. And yeah. and, and therefore, even though Nate Oates is brilliant and 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 uh, definitely gets a max out of what he has, I mean, he worked miracles at Buffalo. And, and I think he's worked miracles with this team. Again, I did not evaluate this team as being very good. 
and here they are, you know, uh, with a pretty high rating. But again, a lot of that was built on on some home blowouts, uh, and and those are, you know, the Indiana State blowout was just the Indiana State was down two starters, and it it didn't count. You know, these home games and these early in the season, just it. There's a big difference between that and playing an NCAA tournament game on a neutral court. Like you could just, they don't even come close to matching each other. Alabama did lose to Clemson at home, and they lost to Oregon on a neutral. Like this is a team that is very, very beatable, and Charleston is very, very good. And, and an upset is certainly uh, lurking here. This is not again. If you're not going to overwhelm some of these mid majors athletically, uh, the College of Charleston coach he, he did great at Winthrop Kelsey. He's brilliant, and. They don't mind playing fast, so uh, they play hyper fast. They play a lot of guys, and uh, Alabama may not like this. Uh, I think Kelsey will have uh, them well prepared for this game, and uh, they've had they've had time off. And uh, again, I don't think this is a great Alabama crew, so definitely an upset's possible. And I, I have a big bet on uh, Charleston at a better price, mind you, than than what's available. But and I'd, I'd still be leaning towards Charleston at nine and a half. Yeah, you said you got this at 11 and a half, so it's already yes, done. Yeah, DraftKings was opening the lines as they uh, posted the game, so I had a picnic. Oh. Of course, I had uh, Princeton plus one and a half against UNLV last night that closed a four and a half point favor. That didn't work out too good, but yeah, oh. they make mistakes, and if you have an opportunity to bet them first, then it's, uh, you know, it's it should be free money. Anyone that does their work, like if I posted a line to another handicapper, he would beat me. He wouldn't beat me as much as I'm going to beat DraftKings, but or FanDuel, whoever opens first. But, you know, there, no one's putting a gun to my head to bet every game. I only have to bet the ones that I think are wrong, and, and you're going to make mistakes. You thought, Charleston, you thought that was a bad line immediately. Well, that's why I bet it. That's, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I got trying to, I'm not trying to make good, bad bets. but well, This is the whole theory of that movie that was where you were one of the characters, the best of it, right? That's the phrase. The best of it is about how you guys as sharps get the best of the line. So I may come in there and I may take uh right. I may, I may, I, I may bet it anyway. I probably will. Cause I want to root for Charleston, but I think it's know, worth a bet. I know, but I get nine and a half and then they lose 80 to 70 and you're well, saying, maybe they I, just win 80 to 70. No, I know. Or but actually more well, likely like a hundred to 92, the way these two teams play. But. I got you. But then you're counting money with your 11 and a half and I'm sitting here like an idiot with my nine and a half. And so, and so, <laughs> so Alan, like that's, that's how the books protect themselves though, because this is what happens during football season is like they open the lines and how they, what they protect themselves from the mistake is they say only for the open, when we open the lines, only for the first like couple of days, the max you can bet is like ten thousand dollars on the game. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then like on game day or the day before the game, you can bet up to like you know a hundred thousand on the games. Yeah, yeah. yeah the certain limits. book. Yeah, most books start off with old limits, and uh, but most books don't know what they're doing. We can have a whole uh, show on that. Like these books don't know what they're doing. They open a line, and the each game is an, is an individual market, right? And the flaw in this this so called European model. Uh, the, if, if you're a bookmaker, you open a line, you take a bet. If the guy who is betting knows what he's doing, you move your line. Because the idea is you want bets on both sides of the fence. But also, if, if someone knows what they're doing, let's say I'm betting Charleston plus 11 and a half, I know what I'm doing, you should drop the line to 10 and a half, 10, 9 and a half, whatever you want to drop it to. But you don't keep it at 11 and a half and take another bet and then another bet. And that's what DraftKings and FanDuel and almost all these places do. They see what the market is, the market being what everyone else is using, and they just keep it there. In this instance, they were the only one with the line open, so I was able to get it. But uh, let's say you're in New England, and the Patriots are on a roll, and they're playing the Buffalo Bills, and they're a seven-point favorite. And you're a bookmaker in New England, and you have 50000 on the Patriots minus seven, and you have 3000 on the Bills plus seven. Okay, well, you should move your line to, you know, seven and a half or seven minus 20 or whatever you want to move it to, eight. I would move it aggressively. Personally, if I was a bookmaker, I'd be moving the lines a lot, trying to write a lot of bets and trying to get the 11 to 10 working for me. But what these places do is they keep it seven. And now the wise guys who think the Patriots are overrated from on their, from all their good play now come in on Buffalo plus seven. And now the whole market in the rest of the country moves to six and a half. So what does the moron up here do with 60000 on the Patriots and 3000 on Buffalo? He moves to six and a half because he wants to stay in market with the rest of what, don't, don't you think what part else of, using. No, you don't do that. You, no, move, you, 
you want to get Buffalo Bill bets. You have to keep it seven or seven and a half. But don't you think part of that, Alan, is that there's there's so many goofies like me and Roser that are there now, and we are betting on this stuff, and there's so many millions of people betting on this stuff that so you and the other guys that are actually like really good at this and make a living doing it, like we're it, it, like well, the, you have the, to know your customer. You have to know who. I, who, I get it, but the scale, customer, right? but but the but, scale but doesn't just, go drastically in uh, against their favor, even if you're you know picking winners and winning whatever, because there's so many of us that are now betting on this stuff that weren't before. Like I think the sharp money mattered more previously. Is that a is that a fair theory? No, sharp money is all that matters. That's the sharp money drives the markets everywhere. However, in the NCAA tournament, you might have this one-off place that has you know a good customer who likes to bet a lot, and you'd want to move your you want to move a line. You don't want a hundred thousand on one side and nothing on the other. I got you. That's the whole point of moving lines is to try to balance the books or get them close to balanced. So but if you're but, but this, uh, but if you have sixty thousand on the Patriots and three thousand on Buffalo, and they're at seven, and the rest of the country is now six and a half. You can't move to six and a half. But in fairness, this doesn't really apply to what we're talking about, right? Because I'm bringing I'm you saying. on on Thursday for a game tomorrow that you have at 11 and a half. And if we bet it now, we're getting it nine and a half. Right. I, I actually have it at 10 and a half also. But, uh, mm. but I still think it's worth betting at nine and a half. I got you. But at what point yeah. would you not bet it? Nine. <laughs> <laughs> and does the UAB – I would ask you just – you wouldn't bet it at nine, but you bet it at nine and a half. <laughs> yeah, well, half points are worth a lot. And no, you, no, and, no, and, no, and, no, and, no, and let me just, no, let me just, let me just, let me just. Dude, get half, worth, a half a point's worth a lot, and, Michael, more uh, than you believe. Is it worth 120? I mean, uh, 20 cents, no, uh, 20 cents on its own, no. Is it worth buying to, from 10 to 20? Yes. That's what I'm asking. My opinion. A computer will tell you no. My opinion is yes. So no. you would say I should just buy 10? 10 minus 20, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I was, I, and everyone's going to laugh at me and disagree with that, all right? Because the computer will say that's that's ridiculous. But You've been doing this your whole life. You know, and, I, and, I, and I can give you the math as to why I think I'm right. I'm just not. Uh, it, that's not what this show's about. And I shouldn't even get into that whole market thing with bookmakers on why their model's flawed. That was really too much of a, a, a offshoot to, <laughs> to, to be relevant to the show. Inside. Anyway. It's inside baseball. It's fine. This kind of so I want to ask you about UAB again because this is the kind of the stuff. Hell, we're going back to that. We're, well, we're there, there's on Charles, but there's betting reasons for it because it. You and I, Chris, we look at this and we're like, "Oh crap, that worries me." But for Alan, clearly it doesn't. But it's the fact that over eighty percent of the public bets and the money is on UAB, and the line is going the other way. <laughs> San Diego State has gone from minus seven to minus seven and a half. Do you care about that is at that all? Really Does true? that bother you at all? Yeah, the money and the bets are all on UAB. Over eighty percent of it is on UAB. Is on but UAB, the, but and the, the line line's going. The line's seven going, and a half, really? Yeah, it's gone to seven and a half. Yeah, well, that the game hasn't started yet, right? No, it's tomorrow. Yeah, You're right. So the game might the the line might move the other way by the time it starts. I can't even find. Oh, there it is. You know, it's it's basically seven. Okay. It's seven. Yeah, it's seven everywhere. Not seven half, but still. And until the, it, n number one, I'm not. I'm actually. I don't think the closing line uh, is is a good indicator of the actual what the line actually should be. If you're a handicapper, you want to hide what you're doing. You, you you don't want you don't want to announce to the world that you bet. UAB plus seven. Personally, I don't give a shit. I got my bet down, and I'm doing a radio show. So, <laughs> but, but, and it and it's the end of the year, so it's it's not it's not getting in my way. And and you know, I have my own little uh, thing in Connecticut that I'm I'm betting, and they put lines up rather quickly. So this has no impact on anything. I got Back you. in the day when I was relevant and betting ridiculous amounts of money, we would try to hide what we're doing. We would lay two and hope the game would stay two, or you know, that that's the goal of a of a handicapper. Is yeah. to not tell the odds maker that you like a certain side. So, if you truly know what you're doing, you're going to bet and and try to hide it as best you can. It's hard in today's world where people can tap into computers and yeah. if someone's winning, that there's all kinds of people doing evil things to find out what you're doing. But uh, I got you. Right. All right. Anyway, all right. so the closing line is not necessarily uh, uh, 
rock solid. It's not necessarily a true indicator of what the actual line should be, in my opinion. All Again, right. most smart guys would say I'm crazy. We got four left. Uh, what's the line on Houston Longwood? I can't. I don't see it here. What is it? Twenty four. That game. That that game's here in Memphis as well. Lucky you. That's not one of the better games. <laughs> I'm aware. Longwood coach is really good, but uh, uh, last time they were in this spot, they got destroyed by Tennessee. No, oh, I'm and, not. I'm not going to stay for that. That game's an eight twenty game. The uh, Tennessee, Tennessee, great defensively, like Houston and Longwood couldn't deal with the athleticism. I, I'll say this about Houston, just for the next round and a couple rounds after. So Houston has been among the best teams since Samson got there. But once again this year, they've lost players to injury for the year. They've lost three of them, I think, to injury. And another kid got hurt in the uh, conference tournament. And I'm not sure what his status is. I like He, he played, but he was pretty useless in, against Iowa State. They play so hard for so long in this long conference grind that last year they ran out of gas because they got a little shorthanded. And the year before, they ran out of gas. And I, I could see something similar happen this year. If they were healthy, they, they'd be it'd be them and UConn in the final. But I could see them uh, crashing out. I think Kentucky uh, I think Kentucky has a good chance to take them out. And, and I think Kentucky actually to win the whole thing is a, is a good bet. I might as well throw that out there in case someone wants a sleeper team. As much as I, I can't stand Calipari as a coach, I like him as a person. Even though I've never met him, he seems to be uh, – I know he's very charitable and, and he seems to do the right thing. Uh, in life, but as a coach, he's he's uh, shaky <laughs> at best. Kentucky uh, is yeah, he, he actually he actually kicked a puppy. Last yeah, week. yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, he what? No, he's kidding. He said he kicked a puppy. Um, Better not have touched a dog. Plus, uh, I'm seeing 2200 on Kentucky. Is that right? Yeah, this this better prices around, but that they're the they're the team that has a very very good draw. And they won in Tennessee. They won in Alabama, I believe. Like they're capable of, of very, very high-level play. Obviously, he gets the best players. They actually must have gotten a better assistant this year because they're running better offense than they've ever run. They're actually shooting more three-pointers and shooting them well and taking good shots. Something that's not normal for Kentucky. They're still prone to bounce of stupidity, and that that might doom them. But their draw is so good. They're in a very weak bracket, and they're facing a Houston team that could be. Could be collapsing in a heap under under the strain of playing like such intense high level basketball for so long, and are, are once again shorthanded. That could catch them again, and Kentucky can definitely take them out. So, uh, Kentucky at uh, yeah, you'd need you'd need, you'd need at least 20, 24 to one though, twenty five to one I think to make it really worth it. All right, let's but do uh, so good that maybe not, you know. Uh, Let's do uh, James Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's five and a half point favorite. James Madison's got thirty wins. God, all in on James Madison. I am. Oh, definitely one of the best bets of the tournament. Yeah, they they started off the year they won in Michigan State and then they won in Kent State in double overtime, which at the time looked like a great win. But they made by the end of the year when they made their run in the conference tournament it looked like a good win too. But I challenge any team in the world to go to Michigan State, win an overtime, and then go to Kent State and win an over double overtime like back to back on the road. I, I, there aren't many, including some of the blue bloods. Like that's just, uh, that's mega impressive. They did nothing during the year to dissuade me from thinking that uh, they're not any good, except for the two games against Appalachian State, who somehow, perhaps, is, a, is just a bad matchup for them. I don't know. Again, I'm not an X and O's guy, uh, but they've done nothing wrong all year, and and like I said, th those two wins alone are, are good enough for me. They're not playing much. Wisconsin's not some great team. I watched them play uh, the conference tournament. I wasn't impressed at all. They're the you know the usual uh, well coached Wisconsin who who's going to run this stuff and control tempo and and rebound well and and defend well. But again, their athleticism is not elite, and and some of these mid majors that's their only challenge is, is being out athleted, and when they're not, their coaching is usually better than than the opponents. Uh, yeah, guard knows what he's doing, but James Madison had plenty of time to get ready. They have a great, very good coaching staff and a very good team. And I, I'd really kind of be surprised if they didn't win the game. So, oh, wow. All right. There's another, there's a good money line then. If we yeah, want to I, 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 I think they'll win this game. I, I, I don't, I, I wasn't impressed with Wisconsin at all. Even though they kind of took Illinois to the wire, but Illinois looked like they didn't give a shit about the game. Like they, they really were flat as hell. And Madison's really good, man. Like, Winning one of these road games in Michigan State, like that's no joke. They got thirty wins. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, they ran. The, yeah, they're really good. Like, 
really good. Thirty is such an extreme number. Uh, TCU and Utah. The line is really high. Like that is that is a really good bet. Like I don't. Maybe I have James Madison a tad overrated, but even if I do, the line's too high. Like Wisconsin is just not a great team. I don't know. I don't know what they've done to to warrant such a, a good rating. But we'll find out. I've been wrong before. Not this year, though. This year's been good. Utah State, TCU. What's the line on this? Four, I think. Four. All right. Well, the Mountain West has shown pretty well. I'll say that. Like, not that, not that that's some big deal. Like, but uh, well, I, I was with uh, Boise last night. That was. You like that it? was when Colorado State was was awesome in in the playing game. Colorado but, State was awesome. Yeah, that was that was really impressive. Like, they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be a tough out. I'm not a big TCU fan. I, 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 uh, I visually I haven't liked them, and and result wise, they they've been they've had their moments. But every one of the Big Twelve has their moments. You have so many chances to have your moments that is you know, still is this still it, Jamie lost. Dixon? Is this still Jamie Dixon? Yeah, Jamie Dixon. He, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, but he always loses in the tournament. Yeah, the team's not great. You know, it's TCU. It's well, but but he it's lost at Pitt some, every year. Remember, he yeah. lost at Pitt like every year in the tournament early. Yeah, and it's not some blue blood program that that's gonna you know. Again, I keep saying this, but that's the big thing is, is with thirty second clocks and letting them play a little yeah. bit. Athletes matter. Unfortunately, it should be more coaching than than guys just out out athleting out athleting you. That used to be the spirit of college basketball, is what coaches did to prepare games. It was really. Uh, a much more interesting game back then, but now this, it's just, this Utah State guy has been unbelievable. It's a one-year deal, right? The Danny uh, Sprinkle. Sprinkle, yeah. I guess I guess the rumor is he's got the Washington job, but I don't know why he'd leave there for Washington. Mm. Uh, Utah State's a better job. Uh, Utah State's got like one of the best home courts on the planet. They have huge, huge following, uh, great support. I don't, I don't know why he'd leave that for Washington, which is just a uh, not, not, not your haven for uh, basketball. Even though I guess Seattle is a, is a good recruiting area. Again, this is out of my thing. But anyway, I'm not a fan of TCU, and I am a fan of Utah State. So I, I definitely be uh, – that's my succinct version. I, I think Utah State's uh, – given given what I watched out of the Mountain West, like the – you know, and, and maybe I'm – maybe I'm contradicting myself because I like against Nevada. But, but TCU did lose to Nevada in Hawaii. In fact, they got killed by him. So that might be uh, – a premonition of what's to come here, or not? I, I, I just, uh, I, I definitely lean to Utah State. I made the game uh, two and a half, so I would take four and a half, just, just because it's two points off my number, and that's what I look for. Uh, but I might even take four for a little bit, just because it kind of feels like a pickup game to me. St. Mary's, a team that you have loved, is five and a half against Grand Canyon, a team that has super impressed you. Yeah, that's not a matchup that I was dreaming of, but somehow uh, the committee does that every year. Uh, disappoints with uh, some of the matchups, but yeah, St. Mary's a five seed and Gonzaga a five seed. Like, I, I'd like to know how they came up with that. Where St. Mary's beat them. St. Mary's won the the, the West Coast Conference, and then uh, they beat Gonzaga in, in the finals of the tournament. So, you know, how are they the same seed? I, I don't, I don't get it. St. Mary's. Got off to a rocky start, but after that, they were they were immense. Yeah, they lost Jefferson for the year, but it's Randy Bennett, and there may be no one better. Uh, visually watching that team play, they they never make a mistake, and if you make one, they're going to exploit it. Uh, both their guards are terrific. Mahaney, who hasn't panned out the way I thought he would. I thought he was second coming, and he's not. He's athletically a little limited, but he's still brilliant in, in, in what he does and, and fits right into to Bennett's... Uh, Whatever Bennett wants to do, he's going he's to get it done. And, and the kid with the long last name has become the point guard, and he's almost unstoppable at times. They run such intricate stuff that's so hard to guard. Their defense is amazing. They rebound well. They have no holes in the armor, except maybe athletically they're a little lacking. But with Randy Bennett, that that's going to be over, overcome. Uh, but Grand Canyon, the other side, had a great year. Bryce Drew knows what he's doing. Just a, a, a terrific year for them. They had some very, very strong games. But it feels like St. Mary's is just a better version of them. The game is priced right, so I'm not betting it. It'll be an amazing game to watch. Two very, very good coaches of two very, very good teams, unfortunately, seeing each other in the first round. What might be interesting is if Charleston doesn't beat Alabama, St. Mary's will in the next round. I will tell you that uh, in advance, that I don't think Alabama will beat St. Mary's. And they will be favored over St. Mary's. So 
that might be something to look for in the next round. That is if St. Mary's beats Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon is, is a brutally tough out, but I think the St. Mary's team is pretty special. And uh, you just got to stay away we'll, from we'll it. Though. Find, we'll find out. We'll find out. They they have no holes in their game. When I watch them uh, play Gonzaga in that conference tournament final, that was a very very special performance. Well, like I they barely made a mistake on either side of the ball. Just fantastic basketball in a very pure sense of the word. After all these games are done today, uh, let's do this again tomorrow morning, and we'll go through the Saturday games uh, if you can. Uh, we'll just do it at the same time. We'll do it at whatever eleven your time, ten my time. Does that work for all you? Right, well, I gotta I gotta get up early and get to the gym then. That's for sure. All right, I'll just text you about I'll it try later. To sleep better. It sounds to me like for Friday, the 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 big games that you're gonna have, you've got UAB really big, you've got A and M big. You said. You've yeah, got, but at a, better, at a better price, so careful there. You've got Charleston big at a better price. Yeah. And then you've the got that, James Madison big. Right, Those the, two are the, that are available, the two that are available are UAB and James Madison. You love that, those. That are big bets that you can you can get at prices that I think are, are well worth it. Pretty much what I took is what you get. I took five and a half with James Madison. I took seven with UAB. I might have taken seven and a half with UAB, but I would take seven for a lot too. And then today, uh, Duquesne plus 10. A little less than uh, Akron plus 12 and a half, which I think has gone down a little bit. So those are the four best ones. But definitely uh, Madison and UAB are, are Madison especially. I, I no, UAB too. Both money lines probably good too. All right. We're going to check them out and then we'll uh, – I'll, I'll holler at you later today. We'll reconvene after this first round today and we'll, uh, we'll set things up for Saturday. Find a good barbecue place. I'm going to do it. All right, be good. All right, buddy. Thanks, Alan. Cheers. Alan Boston, college basketball wise guy, and uh, certainly giving all of his opinions on all of these different the games. Wins. I value it greatly. This is going to be fun to watch. I love to see how it plays out. He was very confident that Charleston win. If it's still uh, nine and a half tomorrow, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that. I'll buy that hook. I want a roof. I'll him. buy that hook and take it at 10, minus 20. Boy, he did not like Nebraska, did he? No, he did not. He likes A&M. I like A&M, too. You do? Yeah. Hmm. I think but I think that if it's – I just look at it from the point of that that team has one guy. Like, all Buzz Williams has to do is stop one guy. Like, I think Buzz Williams probably can do that. I mean, it's Nebraska. How freaking good can they be? You know how hardcore you got to be for your four ones that you really like to be Duquesne, Akron, I mean, like it's like, Charleston, <laughs> yeah. UAB, and James Madison. I trust in you, Alan. <laughs> yep. We'll see how it plays out. We will. You never know. Uh, but I certainly love getting to hear about all these different games and a lot of things I don't know about a lot of these teams. Yep. Uh, we'll reconvene with Alan tomorrow. We'll also reconvene with Jessica tomorrow. Same deal. Tomorrow, leading up to the NCAA tournament, we will be on from 9.30 to 11. Alan's going to join us at 10. And then the games. Uh, enjoy the game. The rest of the day. It is March Madness. I absolutely love it. If you wager, wager responsibly. Or don't. <laughs> or just be irresponsible. Do you want a new car or not? Yeah, or not. <laughs> Do you want <laughs> Do you want a Tesla that you can get tickets in on your way to work like Gary Parish? Or, or no? no. <laughs> Keep living your chicken life then. Yeah. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, we go.